for we come to you live on the field of 68 from the Bayou Music Center as our final four shows continue. I'm John Fanta. He is Terrence Oglesby. He's Randolph Childress, and he is Rob Doster. Over the next two hours, we'll be talking all things college hoops. If you're in the YouTube chat, feel free to send us a question tonight. Producer Dagan Hughes is around, and let's jump right in, fellas. I have a big question to start the show tonight. RC, what time did you get here today? <laughs> I wasn't here all day, so I don't know. I, I got here about 7.45. <laughs> well, that was on time then. That's what I said I earlier had dinner today, with the too. Wife. Hey, listen, well, let me be clear. I had dinner with my wife. I'm unapologetic about that. Are you, wait a minute. <laughs> and we went to Papado's. You oh. were where? It was really good. Well, boy, Where'd you go? I pointed out to you. Really the, one, the one I pointed out to you? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, where, where'd you go? Papado's. It's a Cajun, it's a Cajun that restaurant. That sounds good. It is now, very now, actually, good. Actually, I'm going to give it back to him. Why the hell... Did you have me ask that question? He was here at 7.45. What was because call? he had to come and get me. Hey, what was call time? 7.30. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, no, I, listen, I'm wrong. He said 7.30. Well, you're the main act. No, you're not. You're no, not. No, you're no, not. no, no. Hey, you're, you're. But my boss, I had to take the boss to dinner, and I'm, I'm unapologetic about that. I'm sorry. RC, that's what I was going to say. You might. If you, you want to call my wife and rip her, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm you know, not gonna rip your wife. Let me know how to turn wife. Yeah, how's yeah, that go for you? Yeah, good luck for you. All right, let's jump right in here. So, Jeff Goodman and I were over at NRG Stadium earlier today while you guys were talking with Andrea Hurley, who has been the star of social media everywhere today. She's trending in an electric on Twitter. Factory. She was an electric. She what was, was amazing. What was your takeaway from your conversation with her? Uh, we need more Andrea Hurley. <laughs> she can have her own show. She can replace Jeff Goodman. We don't need him anymore. I learned that Dan is not the toughest person in his house. <laughs> That's usually how it works. Like me. Yeah. I don't feel bad. I, I'm, the, I'm in the same boat there, too. Hey, <laughs> behind every strong man is a stronger woman. <laughs> the, the amazing thing is, is that I don't Did you hear our segment from NRG Stadium? And did you hear what Goodman proposed? Goodman proposed that Doster could be replaced by Andrea Hurley, and now Doster's proposing that Goodman get replaced by Andrea Hurley. Yeah, Easily. But, but Goodman, Goodman might know some coaches in the, in the words of one day Portnoy, but Goodman can't get the electric factories on the show. <laughs> he can't do it. He doesn't have talent like that. All right, let, let's jump right in. So I got a story for you guys, and, and from the players, I want to hear your perspective on that. So okay. today Matt Bradley gets up to the podium for San Diego State. State. All right, for the 31 and 6 Aztecs, who frankly, I think they're kind of, I still think they're getting disrespected heading into this week, and they belong here. Bradley plays three years at California, plays three years at Cal. He then transfers to San Diego State. He's in his fifth year of college basketball. He's 23 years old. Today he goes, You know, in my first three years at Cal, I thought I could just bully people in the Pac 12. He goes, I could just, I could play bully ball, I could go into practice, I could push people around. He goes, Cal's record this year? So. Yeah, not good. Yeah. Not good. He goes, I get to San Diego State. He goes, I'm getting in fights with guys at practice. We were getting in fights. That's our culture. He's like, then you get out of a practice in, in our uniforms. He goes, you go play a game. He goes, we play harder knowing that we're never going to see that team again because we could beat them, and then we don't have to worry about if we get into a battle or a fight. But that struck me. A guy who originally committed to a Pac-12 school, albeit a bad one, he gets to San Diego State, and he's like, whoa, whoa, this, this ain't Cal. This ain't even the Pac-12. This is San Diego State, and this is how we're going to do things here. That's a credit to the culture that's there now. It's a bunch of veteran guys. That's an experienced team, probably the most experienced team in the Final Four. Can they, in your mind, do you believe Monday night, in your head, San Diego State can hoist a national championship trophy? Yes. I think... The great thing yes. about this tournament is, honestly, any four of these teams can honestly win the tournament. I really believe that. Is it as clear-cut as UConn-Miami top two in odds in your mind, or do you think San Diego State's actually got the second-best shot? I would say they have the second-best shot because they're the favorite to win a game. Miami's an underdog. Yeah. Miami's an underdog. So I do think that San Diego State is a team. If, if there's one team in this tournament that I think can give UConn the most trouble that's left, San Diego State. I agree. I mean, we, we've seen UConn. If there's one team left, what now? Sorry. That can give UConn trouble. The most trouble is I'm because afraid. they can stop what UConn wants to do. If you can stop UConn from running their stuff, and you can keep Adama Sonogo from being effective inside, and you can get physical with them, that's how you beat them. Miami can give them a hard time, I too. Mi I like, think like, Miami will. I've, I've, I'm on a record for saying that. Yeah, I, I, oh, you already I, called the only, the only team 
where I think there's a, contra- there's a really difficult matchup for San Diego State, I believe it's Miami because I believe it's pace. I just believe Miami's going to keep it at a pace that's really, really high, and I don't know if that's not the way San Diego State wants to play. I, I mean, obviously they're capable of it, but defensively they want to hold you in the 50s or 60s. I don't think you're going to hold Miami in the 50s or 60s. No, there's a lot to be said there. I, I want to go back and talk a little bit about San Diego State and what Bradley was talking about, how they would get in fights in practice. That's That says a lot about the they play. how they approach every day. That's yeah. what I'm saying, T.O. Uh, like, that's how they approach every day. But here's an even, even bigger part of that. If you're able to do that and still be a team later, that means everybody's on the same page. That means there's a certain standard in practice. And – they can, they can go into practice knowing, like, hey, this practice is going to be a war, but after practice is over, we'll be able to wash it. Not many teams can do that. Not many teams can do that. And Nathan Mensa said in the press conference, he goes, my first San Diego State practice, we walked in. They go, be there at noon. He goes, so I'm there at 11.45. He goes, coach walks in at noon. It's just us, the freshmen. They did, thir- they did 30 minutes of defense, hardcore. He goes, my behind is in a stance for a half hour in the press room. He's saying this. He goes, then we get done with the 30 minutes. The rest of the team goes, and they go, we're going to do 90 more de- minutes of defense right now. He goes, I thought, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> that name was on that paper at that point. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> the ink was dry. The ink was dry. You're not going anywhere. I, I think those are the worst those practices. Those two teams, by the way. all you hear oh. about when FAU and San Diego State is them being connected. Yeah, and I, and I'm not even talking about within the program. I I even talked to the Kansas State staff, and I was like, honestly, what's the what's the DNA? Like, what's what's the scouting report? He's like, it's not an X and O thing with F- FAU. He said they're just connected. He said there's you don't rattle them. They're just connected. They're so selfless. They just battle tested. And he just said that's the thing about it. it's not a schematic thing that concerns you the most. He said they just so like when a guy tags in, one guy comes in behind him, it's like, hey, they're just continuing the same thing. And that's what you hear with San Diego State. It's just more defensive minded, but you just hear them being a connected group. Yeah, the, the thing about Florida Atlantic that I think is going to give San Diego State trouble, and we talked about this earlier, T.O., you need to be able to have a team that can make shots in one on one situations. You need to have a team that can beat individual defenders one on one and win a matchup. Now, I think Florida Atlantic has that. My question is, do they have it good enough to be able to beat San Diego State? Like, San Diego State's got dudes, they're old, they're tough, they're physical. Adam Seiko's out here. That man should be a linebacker somewhere. He's, right? Yeah. Like, he's, a, he's playing the wrong he's sport. He's 24 years old. Yeah. That's another huge thing. A bunch massive. of old dudes. I mean, 24 years old in college basketball. Six years. Yeah, that's, it's, it's too much. Guys, it's too much. Get those guys out of there and, like, let's get back to college guys playing ball. But, like, that's, the that's a huge in the game. thing. Oh, it's a huge Wait, advantage. Tell me a story. You just said those practices are the worst. Oh, you got to tell me about your first week of college practices, what you were thinking. First of all, my first thought was, man, these dudes are big, and I'm going to have to cut off Sam Perry, who's 6'6", 220 <laughs> pounds. And, like, it's not easy because every cut hurts. And it's a big adjustment. I those defense only practices though are awful. I, I I was in the G League and we practiced one time. It was an hour and fifteen minutes, only but only shell drill. That's all it was, shell drill. And my back started hurting real quick. That's all I'm saying. How about you, Derek McQueen? First practices from South Carolina. Uh, was a junior my freshman year, and like people don't realize, I didn't start as a freshman. And he, quite honestly, just kicked my ass. Did you think you would? Walking yes. in? I thought I was, man, I was good enough. I played starter minutes and I played. I did, yeah. But people always assume that, hey, you know, because of my, my statistical numbers that I started and I didn't. And did I think he was better than I was? No. But I physically knew he was better than me physically and he kicked my butt. And I got strawberries on my hips to this day <laughs> as a reminder of how physical it was and how physical he was. Hey, coming up on the show, we've got Chris Caputo, the head coach of the George Washington Colonials, coming off a very solid year one where the program made strides. But here's the thing. Chris is also down here for his guy, Jim Laranega. He's a Laranega guy, was with him at George Mason in 2005, was there for several years, and then went with Laranega to Miami, now the head coach at GW. So he's coming up in a few moments. And i got to tell you guys, this will not surprise either of you. It won't surprise you. 
out of all the press conferences that we watched today in Houston, Larinaga went 40 minutes telling stories. He said to us, he goes, why would I retire? He goes, I love this. He goes, what I love about it, and I, I, I want to get your thought on this, he goes, I don't give a damn about anything that happens with John Ruiz or the NIL. It doesn't mean John doesn't mean something to him. Mm-hmm. More about, he's like, I let that speak for itself. I, I don't get involved with that. I tell my guys, I'll see you at 3 o'clock, and I'm going to coach you for two hours. He said, I never want to give that up. Mm-hmm. And he's doing it in Coral Gables. And he's doing it at a program where he's having success. He can win games. I don't think they're ever going to fire him at this point. Like, right? No, they can't. No, they've gone not through this. They've, well, he's won fire. ACC titles. He's their greatest he's coach ever. He's gone through the worst of it. He's, and now he's back and he's Leonard gotten Hamilton to the final four. Like, he's got the, good he's got the dream job. It's a place where how much recruiting does he really have to do if you got an NIL guy there? Let's just call it what it is. I right? think he'll be in, it's fair to say, and I truly believe that had it not been for the FBI investigation, Oh, this would have been a consistent even, thing. It, it wouldn't yes. be the first Final Four yes. he'd been in. We're going we're gonna to talk to Chris about that because it's really interesting what they went through. Well, maybe interesting is not the word, but I don't think people realize how much that program went through because of what they were linked to. I, I believe they suffered the most of all the programs yeah. that were listed in the investigation. Really? I believe they struggled the most. How about this one? So today, Larinaga also revealed, he goes, you know all the Isaiah Wong drama that you all were talking about? He's looking at us. He goes, Wong, I called Wong right after that broke on Twitter. I go, hey, what gives? He goes, Coach, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> he was just trying to get more money. He was <laughs> looking at us? We he talk- was looking at you guys? Yeah. It was a negotiation well, tactic. He goes, Coach, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> and Larry goes, all right, Isaiah. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> How about that for a story? That is unbelievable. You know what that is? You know what that is? Today. That's leverage. Yes. yes. You always have leverage. And then and, Jim Laranaga and, said. And we're talking like if you had to pick a location, like working in South Beach is a tough gig every day. Like, why is he stressed? Oh, well, that's what he said. He said, you know what? I go out every day. I have a smoothie. And I look around at Miami's beautiful campus. <laughs> yeah. That's what he said in his press conference. He also said on his way through that beautiful campus, he goes past the swim team. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Well, not me. He said he that, not me. He did say that. He is. He is college basketball's grandfather. He's incredible. He loves the role. Oh. I love him as a guy. Incredibly personable. And the thing is, is he's done it at a high level for a long time. And to go along with what RC said, like, guys, this is a Miami program that without that investigation, you said it was not their first Final Four. I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, they were he, rolling. He's so likable. That, that program is really rolling if there's not something going on there. And it, it to be honest with you, I'm curious if, Coach Caputo, Chris Caputo, is coming on with us in a second. I wonder if he would have been a, a head coach sooner. And, yeah. and, I, and I believe he would have been yeah. We're gonna get had it not answer. been. That's not, that's not a I believe he would have. That is, it he would have been. It yeah. would have happened. So I agree with RC. Like, this is – they were fine whenever they were under investigation. But now they're back to being what they potentially could be whenever Larry mm-hmm. came the first time. Great segue. We're going to get to Chris Caputo here. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're here on the field of 68. We got a full nearly two hours of content coming your way, folks. Just getting started from the Bayou Music Center. We're presented by Bet Rivers Underdog Fantasy. Now a word from our sponsors, Chris Caputo, right after this to talk hurricanes and more. Today's episode of the Field of 68 After Dark is presented by our partners over at Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play college basketball pick'em, where you can win real cash prizes simply by picking player stats in this weekend's Final Four games and pick them all you do is pick whether a player will go higher or lower on underdogs projected totals whether it's points or rebounds or assists or all of them combined if you're like me and you think Adama Sonogo is going to go nuts this weekend pick higher on his points projection pick higher on his rebounds projection maybe throw in a lower on Matt Bradley's scoring totals a higher on Isaiah Wong whatever it is that you like put them all together and if you hit them all then you can win as much as 20 times your money on a single game. Underdog Slick Mobile app is easy enough that dummies like Jeff Goodman have even figured out how to use it. So go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app and use the code FIELD, that's F-I-E-L-D, to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. 68 from the Final Four. We're live from the Bayou Music Center. I'm John Fanta. He is Rob Doster. He's Randolph Childress. We are pleased to be joined 
by the head coach, the George Washington Colonials, coming off of a very solid year one at the helm, an over 500 performance in the Atlantic 10, 10 wins in the A-10. It's Chris Caputo hey, who is with us. Chris, before we talk about your man, Jim Laranega, <laughs> we'll get to that. Give us a, a recap of year one at George Washington. It, it was fun to see the energy of the program, the yeah. fan base, everything following on social media. What did you make of your first year at the helm? Yeah, I thought we had a, a took a lot of good steps forward. Um, you know, had a winning record in the league, first time since 17, most wins since 17. Uh, guys had some individual accolades. We had the uh, first team all league player in James Bishop, most improved player in Brendan Adams, and then rookie of the year in Max Edwards. So, you know, guys had some success, and then you know had some good environments. Like you said, we played South Carolina in the non conference, had a great crowd, had a great win there. You know, beat Dayton at home. Had a couple overtime wins that were uh, exciting. Um, so, yeah, good step forward for us in, uh, in his hometown. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Chris, one of the things that we were talking about was, um, was how long it took you to get that head coaching job. We, and me and you have had this conversation yeah. before, but you were on lists in, like, 2016, 2017, yeah. the next great assistant coach, the next <laughs> guy to be on the big job. And yeah. then you guys, obviously what happened with the FBI kind of um, – put it into a run, gave, it made it take a little bit longer. Are you happy with where you're at? Because for my yeah. Man, that's a perfect job for you. Jim. Yeah, it was a great job. I loved my time in Miami, 11 years, but before that, nine years at George Mason. So I love the D.C. area. Obviously, the basketball culture there is incredible. And, um, you know, to, to be able to coach college basketball at a place that cares about college basketball, that cares about high school basketball, great place to live. You know, I couldn't be luckier. I found, you know, the right place for me. Now, for a first-time head coach, yeah. and, and, and this culture and everything that's going on <laughs> with the retention of your players and everything else, what's your philosophy as far as that, as far as moving George GW more forward? Yeah, I mean, we were doing the portal before there was a portal at Miami. You know, <laughs> we had, you know, uh, a lot of success with transfers, so I'm comfortable with those guys. Obviously, the difference is you don't get to sit them out. Right. We felt like if we could sit guys out, they'd get older, obviously, but also you know, you could really work with them and you could move them forward as players and then you'd get like that much better, you know, the following year when they became eligible. I think anybody has to both make it work for you, but also you have to have some stability in your program. I, I don't know that you can have a, like a new 13 guys every year, yeah. but I think like what Miami's done in, in a sense where, yeah, there's transfer success there from guys like Pack and O'Meara, but then a, a number of uh, guys who have been in the program for a few years, so there is some level of continuity. I, it's hard, though. I don't think anybody's got, like, a great answer Yeah, right I don't now. know if yeah. figured it out yeah. yet. Yeah. I, let, me, let me ask you this, Chris. So when you were with Jim Laranega at George Mason, you kind of did what Florida Atlantic has done. They yeah. Were, they were, you were an 11 seed, they were a 9 seed, so it's not quite the same, but you came from a mid-major league, and you made the run to the Final Four. What, what's it like for them right now? They're on a stage that they've never been on before. They're getting more attention than they got all season long. Like, what, what is that team going through in this moment? You lived it. Well, I, I think it's really a whirlwind, you know, a ma magic carpet ride, as they say. I mean, you, the amount of media you get uh, if you're a, a Florida Atlantic or a George Mason at that time and you make the NCAA tournament is a big deal. The amount of media you get then to be in the second weekend mm -hmm. is tremendous. And then... If you make the Final Four, it, it can be overwhelming. I think it probably, you're also battling this like, hey, some of this is that our job is to illuminate the university, you know, in, in this situation. Because everybody knows the University of Miami. You know, everybody knows UConn. Uh, everybody knows Kansas last year, right? But not as many people know Florida Atlantic. So I'm sure Dusty's trying to balance some of the stuff he's doing with the idea that, you know, my job in a lot of ways is to market this university uh, on a stage where the, the you couldn't pay for this. There's no there's no amount of money yes. that could pay for this marketing that they're getting. So Chris, Chris Caputo, the head coach, George Washington, our guest, and he spent 17 years with Jim Laranega. And today, Jim was asked, Coach, what are the parallels? What are the differences from 06 with George Mason to, to right now at Miami? And he goes, he just looks at everybody, puts his hands up, he goes, I mean, I'm the same guy. I have my smoothie in the morning and I walk around. <laughs> he goes, you know what? And then he thought about it. You can reflect on this. He goes, I'm probably a little bit more patient than I was 17 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's that's probably true. I, I, I heard from some Bowling Green people this week that said he was 
not as calm on the sideline at 1987 <laughs> at Bowling Green as he is now. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the guy's gotten a lot of reps at this. Um, he's very, very uh, secure in, like, who he is and what he wants, and um, he's got a great way about him with the players. And I do think he's really um, learned to, and he's done this a long time, so it's not new now, but it probably was new in the 90s or early 2000s where you, you, he's kind of learned to train and trust, as he says. You know, you kind of work really hard. He coaches those guys every day in every way, but then when we play, you know, just kind of getting them to play with a free mind and not, you know, over coaching them per se in a game, yeah. you know. Give me a story from that run. Give me something that that you remember that, that Coach L did. You remember from one of the teammates that just really stood out to you. Um, I mean, I uh, from the run, you know, I, I would just say, uh, trying to think about, he, he, he did a great job using some some humor to uh, you know get the guys I'm motivated. That Coach Al was using. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's surprising me. Yeah, I never would have expected. So like, I, I think the one that people know about maybe in this it's apropos because they're playing UConn. So uh, I remember being like waiting around after practice or before practice for the interviews that you do, and UConn's guys are getting interviewed, and Josh Boone didn't know what league. Uh, George Mason was in, and we were the George Mason Patriots, and somebody asked him, hey, do you know what league they're in? And he was like, yeah, I think they're in the Patriot League. <laughs> and somebody, like one of the writers came like sprinting, sprinting out, you know, and was like, they don't even know what league you're in. And so um, when we got ready to play, and I, I can't remember, I think it was before the game, he said, hey, um, you know, they don't know what league we're in. They, they don't know that we're they think we're now in the CAA, but the CAA is actually a secret group of society or something. They were like, I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, it's the Connecticut Assassins Association. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Colonial Athletic Association. <laughs> Let me go. put this out there. I'm on record oh, that I, fa I think Miami's going to win the game. All right, that's good. I hope so. I, hope you know, so. I love I Tell love Danny and Luke and yeah, no, no, Kamani like, and listen, Tommy Moore. Kamani's my guy. Yeah, those Danny, are my guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. I think Miami. Tell me why I'm right. Why do you believe I'll be I, right? I, I, um, I think obviously UConn's depth is is so impressive, um, but I wonder if the game gets close, your depth doesn't matter, and your guard play matters. You know. Yes. Yes. And, and, close game. And so close game. You know, I, I would. I, you know, again, UConn's been so impressive because of the waves that they yes. can come at you in. And uh, it seems like, you know, whoever's in the game is a threat. And then not many people have a center like Sagona and then bring Kling it in. And, like, yeah, sometimes yeah. you're like, wow. But I wonder if they can, if we can keep the game close, that now your depth goes out the window and now the guard play. That's been my scouting you know? report. And Miami, I mean, the way Jordan Miller's playing – He's playing like a guard. You realize what he made you do, right? Uh, What's that? He just suckered you he, in. He, he just suckered you in. He made you take a side, Chris. Did he say anything that I didn't bet you guys had You said. were fist pumping. There you go. <laughs> Tight camera. Hey, I am. But you know what? Here's where, here's where I think you make some awesome points it is – Connecticut's won their four NCAA tournament games by a combined 90 points. Yeah, they've been and, awesome. And Danny said it today. He's like, look. Because someone's like, well, coach, what went wrong? He's like, look when they lost six of eight in January. He's like, yeah, our defense was pathetic. Yeah, we stumbled. He goes, but that's life in the Big East. He goes, you got Marquette. You got Creighton. You got Xavier with Fremantle at the time. They played right. Xavier with Fremantle both times. He's like, that's part of life in the Big East. In other words, they went through a lot of close games, and that's where point guard play and guard play matters. And who's got the guard advantage in a close game late? Everybody would say Miami. You would think. Their guards yeah. are unbelievable. You're, yeah. you're making him look at him. He's like, I don't want to pick a side, man. I want to be friends I, with everybody. I don't know. I'm neutral. <laughs> I, for the record, I think you going to win. I don't want to pick a side either. Yes, you Miami do. doesn't have to. Yes, you do. Miami but doesn't have to. It's because UConn fans want to wrestle you on a Ferris wheel. That's why. That's right, true. Wait, wait. I, I'm not making that up, I got UConn Chris. fans mad at me because I said that. But I did say, if it's a, I didn't believe that UConn would blow them out. I think UConn has a distinct advantage on the glass. Yeah. But in a close game, I trust Miami guards. I think people take for granted because the ability of their guards to break you down and multiple guys, and not many people have that. 
Yeah. And, when, and then I think that, and I said this to somebody, if you list me the top three guys that you can give the ball to and go make me a play, it sounds both like sides you're of the ball, who are right they? Now. You're trying to convince them right and now. And someone I mean, on this side of the room said you're trying to sell them. all three would be with the Miami Hurricanes. I, 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 I'm not. I, I'm still going UConn. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a question for Go you. ahead. So we talked about it before you came on, that when the FBI investigation came out, Miami was linked to it falsely. Don't get me fired up on that. Where would this program be right now if that hadn't happened? Would, you, would Coach Leonega have a, have a title? Like, what would they be right now if you hadn't had that lull? Because, I mean, how big of an impact, I mean, was, how up, big of an impact was it? It just took time, you know, uh, uh, two years. And then in the third year, unfortunately, we had the most uh, injuries in the Power Five. Mm-hmm. You know, we beat Purdue in the challenge and then got, like, more injured after that. <laughs> uh, so I, I think what they've done this year and – I think what we did last year and, you know, top four finish in the league and, and in Elite Eight, we just picked up where we left off. If you kind of take those years out, mm-hmm. essentially, you know, for 12 years, okay, take out three of them, 10 years, nine years, what have you, basically top four in the ACC. You know, two first-place finishes, a second-place finish, a third-place finish, a couple four, you know. ACC championship. Yeah, two ACC. So. It's pretty incredible when you think about it at a place that, you know, maybe people didn't think that could happen. And, and just to follow up on that, um, when, when, when Coach L makes it to the Final Four this year, right, when he's able to overcome everything that they went through, like, what does that mean to you to see him get here? Because, I mean, you know him as well as anybody coaching in basketball right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, he's probably somebody who has had uh, – Jobs that are maybe not as traditionally uh, known as basketball jobs, and yet has been as every good yeah. as every bit good as anybody who has, you know. And so for him to, you know, kind of get here and his vision for this and to get to the Final Four, uh, and then you start that's kind of the linchpin. Then you look at you start looking backwards and say, wow, like it's pretty damn good, you know. And uh, he's a Hall of Fame coach. I think. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. No. He, he should, should be in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Though. There's he no, will be. There. He yeah. will absolutely be. no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you about your team. What, sure. what should we expect next year? How, uh, you have scholarships available. You can go in a yeah. portal. You got Max Edwards, coming in. Max Edwards, storm. Like Lock what? it in, right? Yeah. Well, James Bishop's got a decision to make. You know, obviously, if he were to come back, I'd feel like him and Max, you know, having probably the preseason player of the year and the returning rookie of the year would be a good start. Um, I think everyone in our league uh, has – has some talented players come back and then some turnover. And so much of it is now, when I first got into coaching 20 years ago, everything was about your November signing period. You know, like what yeah. what, what did that look like? That determined now, while I think we had a very good recruiting class in in, uh, in, in November, we, we made a trade. We traded Brendan Strong for uh, Trey Autry. We get... Mm-hmm. We get Trey Autry, <laughs> they get they get Brendan Strong in that deal, uh, but but now so much of it is what happens between you know the St. Patrick's Day and mm-hmm. and and June first. Right. It, it's so hard, I think, to anybody. It's hard to predict, you know, where people will finish in leagues and things like that. It's, yes, it's incredible. But I, I would feel like, you know, if James decided to come back, that we'd have two of the, you know, more accomplished players in the league returning, which would be a good start for us. Mm-hmm. Give us the hour to hour, if not minute to minute right now, of you or one of your staff members and how many times they are hitting refresh on the portal. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody. You know, it's not just us. It's everybody. and It's um, very different times, you know, and, and, I, and I think it's uh, – I'm, I'm for player empowerment. Like, I think guys should get NIL. I think, I think the one about being immediately eligible, quite honestly, it's interesting because I would – I don't mind that they can play right away. I, my concern will be a few years now to see what graduation looks like for those guys. That would how be my you, only thing because keep, every time you transfer, you lose credits, right? Most I don't know a school you don't. But and if, I know if you're coming to GW or you're, you're going, going to Wake Forest, credits. like you ain't getting every credit no. from wherever you're going. You better not come in after your junior year or you you won't graduate. And I guess in that, the two part thing I have is. How do you keep yourself sane? Because you get done with the season, I'm sure your family's thinking, all right, we're done with basketball season. Now maybe we got some, some no. more nights today. To... No, how do you yeah. keep yourself sane? Uh, or is your wife just happy when you're out of the house? No, I, I, I think, I think you got to find, find ways to understand that this is 
become a real marathon and not a sprint, you know, and that you better figure out how to keep yourself like in Let decent mood, in decent shape, eating fairly well, you know, trying to exercise and trying to break away a little bit here and there. You know, I, I went to Springsteen Monday and I was checking the portal a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> you were checking the portal as born to run. Born to run is playing. Yeah. And and everyone's run, the everyone's portal. running away from their schools. They're yeah, <laughs> born to run, and we're check we're refreshing the portal. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of Springsteen songs that work for the portal. <laughs> Tenth Avenue Freeze Out, Glory Road. Man, I I don't envy your job right now. I mean, I envy, yeah. I, and I say that because you get to develop young men. But you probably, am I wrong for saying this? You you must like December 1st when you know what your week's going to look like with your team than right now. Yeah, I think there's a rhythm to the season that we just don't have in the off season, And I, I think we're the only sport that, like, yes. that because football's got a rhythm, yeah. right? Uh, the NBA's got a rhythm. When I tell friends of mine that coach in the NBA some of the stuff we're doing, they're like, that's why I don't know why guys, I think that's why guys that come down struggle. Because the, it, it, it's so important for those guys to surround themselves with people that understand right. and them willing to listen to that change or oh, it'll be difficult. All right, my last one. Oh, I, all I'm thinking of. Where's this going? I, yeah, yeah. I, the DMV in the last year, you've come on to GW and everybody's flocked. Kevin Willard's at Maryland. Now Ed Cooley's at Georgetown. Life in the DMV in college I got, basketball. My guy Tony Skeen just got my, my George guy Mason. Tony Skeen just got Tony, George I, Mason. I, 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 you're Shout getting old when him. you've coached yeah. a guy that not, so you know, now you're in your league. Yeah. Yeah, the Life in the DMV right now is what? You know, I I think uh, as Randolph would tell you, like it's really incredible that it, it, the basketball community there is unlike anywhere else in the country. Uh, it's um, it's special. Uh, the, the guys that are good players, I mean, the way they've been brought up yeah. from the time they were very little, the trainers, the strength Everything. coaches, the AU teams, their high school programs, it's it's really like there should be uh, – somebody should write a book. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's incredible. And, you know, mostly all good guys, yeah. good good students. Um, it, it's 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 – you know, really great for me to be back. I was there 10 years. It was special. I'm happy. I'm hoping I'm here a long time again. Except the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> when I moved to Miami, people were like, how are you going to deal with Miami traffic? I'm like, it ain't even close. Like, <laughs> now, it's gotten it, better. I will say COVID. COVID, you know, the government. Not yeah. everybody goes everybody in every day. Yeah, it's got better. So <laughs> I, I live a lot closer um, to work than I did. Uh, well, I live close to D.C., but... Yeah, the traffic is, um, it's a different beast. Well, head coach money, so that's why yeah, you exactly. do that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Chris Caputo, head coach of George Washington, the former Jim Laranega assistant. Chris, congratulations on successful year one. Best of luck in year two at Thanks, GW. Tom. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. We'll be back with more. This is the Field of 68. You guys ever get tired of trying to prove that you won an argument, that your takes weren't hot, they were just right? Well, I have an answer to all of your problems. Vaulted is a new sports prediction app that turns your opinions into facts. You can store all of your predictions and hot takes in your own vault now and forever. Challenge your friends, keep track of the results, and prove that you are, in fact, the smartest one in the room. Vaulted is also releasing a final four competition called their last four pool. What amounts to a hot take challenge, it has a $5,000 prize pool. Who doesn't like free money? I like free money. So if you like free money like me, then go and download the Vaulted app at the link below. Sign up for your free three-month trial and store your predictions now and forever. Interesting. Oh, man. We totally shifted the cast in the last oh, minute. Man. You upgraded. You oh, upgraded. we upgraded significantly. Totally. So Greg Waddell is here. Hello. Randolph Childress is here. Jim Rude is here. And and that, that was a little too much excitement for there. What was going on here? <laughs> I was like, Greg's here. Jim Rune is here. What's hey. that about? Greg Waddell is here. It's like here. Told out appropriately, Greg. Okay, That's okay. what it was. Carter okay. Elliott's here okay. in a shirt that he got from Kate Spade. Um, <laughs> I'm John Fanta. Welcome back. Feel the 68. We are live from a nightclub that, frankly, 
Below 40. I would never be in a, a, a other circumstances. Oh, yeah, true. What are we you would never no, come I here, I love the time. nightclub. I just, it's like uh, what Sean Miller told me when I was in Los Angeles, a fish out of water. What are we? I don't know, Fancy. You look like this. Look oh, like you think kinda, I got nightclub life? I, I think this is your kind of spot here. 40 below. 40 below. We're at Bayou Music Club. <laughs> We're going to dance the night away. Uh, let's jump in. So I'm going to ask you this because we've, we've talked the last 24 hours. Your thought process with this Final Four, and do you think, do you think, coming into this weekend, that it's a foregone conclusion of who's going to win this thing? I'm not going to call it foregone, but I came into it thinking, this is UConn. Like, this is going to be UConn. They're, Man, they're an odds-on favorite to win. There's an over 50% chance by every odds maker that they're going to win. Come on. Jim. They're 15 and 0 against non-conference Kill competition. Mike. Mike, Not a Jim. single team outside the Big East. Okay, has Miami's 14 and 2 year. against non-conference competition. Yeah, how many losses is that? That's two more than UConn. They're and they, okay. This is not a betting show, but they're 15 and 0 against. You the know spread when they got too. a 50 percent chance? They have blown out everyone. We're presented if they by they make it to Monday, then they got a 50 percent chance. Right now, they got a. It's 50% less than on Monday. Oh, no. no. Yeah, 75 and not 90. You're going to win or you're going to lose Monday. But What's don't Mark, give me Mark that Mark, you said that after Gonzaga played UConn. He's like, if you have 48 hours to prepare for UConn, like, good luck. There's just too much to do that you have to figure out your post-up coverage, your pick-and-roll coverage, all the off-ball shooting stuff that Hawkins does. Like, there's just too much in 48 hours. So here's my no, issue not. with UConn. Here's my issue with UConn. Team is great. Yeah. But... Close game. We, we are viewing them as a gauntlet of a team, a Agreed. juggernaut of a team, relative to the other three teams that are remaining. I disagree with that. I think we're viewing them based on what they've done in the tournament, which is what you alluded to last night. But here's my pushback on that. I'll let Fanta repeat what I they're, said. Last night. They're down until St. Mary's starting shooting guard gets hurt. I know. They're down to but Iona the, with but, a minute. Listen, this but in the second half, they've the outscored tournament. teams 174 I, to 107. I, I only stated... And I'm not, again, I am pro-UConn. Like, I, I think they're a hell of a team. Like, you don't get this far without being a hell of a team. I just think there's sometimes it's about matchups. And I said, and I believe this, that Miami's road to the Final Four was equally, if not more, impressive than UConn's. I agree. I buy that. Their path I buy was that. harder. Well, I totally, because Miami, I, I have to say this. In the time that I've watched this sport closely, I have never seen a team be down 13 points in a game that was playing a game more to their style than Miami was playing against Texas. Yeah. Like, never did those kids waver. Never did they get overwhelmed. Whereas Gonzaga and Arkansas, they go down 15 to UConn. It's like, yeah. good night. I thought Miami's demeanor in that game. And then, like, even though Texas was winning, Texas was making an amount of shots that they normally, not in the amount that they were making. Eventually, it was going to break, and when it did, it broke. And there's a lot of belief in that Miami sideline. You guys have talked about it all week, about what Grandpa does. He loosens them up on the sideline, no matter how many they're down, no matter how close it is late. He knows how to just kind of get it out of them and, and make them play the way they're saying. But, Greg, you made the point about how UConn has struggled in first halves. Miami oh. has been an awesome second-half team all tournament. I think yeah. they've won by 7, 8, 13, and 12 in their four games in the second half. They've been fantastic. That's adjustments. That's also, I'm surprised they have that gear because they're not that deep. It's just kind of a mentality. They're I not think. that yeah. deep. I just think the consensus, like, media thing to do here, and, like, we're look, we're hosting a live show. We're sitting here in comfortable recliners, lovely at 40 below with drinks. It's, it's it awesome. is lovely here. It's awesome. 40 below is awesome. But, like, we're going to put our media hats on, right? And the media hat thing to do is, like, oh, UConn is unstoppable right now. No. Is, does Rick Pitino think they're unstoppable right now? No. Like, they were in that game. Does, they're really, 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 really good. Listen, yeah. So are the other three teams. But every team here is really, really, really good. Really, 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 really good. The last well. team that ran through their region was 2021 Gonzaga, and obviously they ran into Baylor. But there's my, no but my Baylor point to you in was this again, Final I Four. Tell me I'm wrong when I say this. And again, completely objective in both of both teams. Was had the tougher road to get here. UConn or Miami. I, I think it's UConn just on opponent, but I would say Miami's been equally impressive You've lost your mind. through their road. <laughs> you have lost your mind. How? You believe that, my, that UConn's road has been easier than, than harder than Miami's? Yeah. Well, let's let's break it down here. So Miami beat Texas. They beat uh, who they beat in the Sweet 16? Uh, Houston. 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 The number one seed. Oh, come on, Jim. <laughs> Jim, you're wrong, Jim. <laughs> oh, 
Jim, they stop they played it. Houston. Are you kidding me? They smoked Houston. They smoked Ar- Houston. Arkansas and Gonzaga is an easier road than Houston and Texas. I, I, I think, well, are we only talking from that second round I'm on? I'm talking about the entire the tournament. Jim, your ass is grass. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think what if you did, I don't want to throw analytics out here too much, but if you no, did no, like no, total Ken no, Pop ranking, total Ken Pop ranking would be lower on UConn's route, I think. The only analytic I have is one. One sure pull off by Eric Musselman. That's Enough. It. There's no way that you could say that the road that Connecticut had was was harder than the road that Miami had. And good for them. I'm I'm not knocking them at all. I, I just the teams they played were good. I don't believe that they're going to be so dominant that they're going to be double digit 15, 20 point wins to That's the championship. Fair. In a That's close game, in a, I, and in a close yeah. game, who do you trust more? That's where I'm wondering. All right. Who are you going to give the ball to? In a close game, in I a, trust Miami more. I, I do. The coaching, also, in the coaching in the guards. The coaching in the guards. That's it. Maybe to RC's point, Miami has been, what, a pick em or an underdog in every game this tournament, whereas UConn has been even a happy favorite. Even in the first favorite. round. Even in the first round. Yeah, Drake, they were the upset. So, we're talking well, analytics, right? We're, now we're throwing the A word around. That's the a scary word. Word. It's a scary word. I knew, yeah. I knew this would backfire. Fanta, Fanta, you said you, the analytic that matters to you. I have one analytic that matters to me, boys. All right. All right, what is it? Who do I want on my side when I get in a fight? Miami's the answer. I want Isaiah Wong and Nigel Pack and Norchad O'Meer on and my don't side. Don't forget Jordan Miller. And Jordan Miller. Jordan. Like, if this turns to a street fight of a basketball game, I want Miami's dudes. And not to throw a dagger at someone, a complete cheap shot, but I'm going to hey. do it. A team Miami beat to get here is the proverbial opposite of that. Trace Jackson Davis, his whole career, has been the guy I want to go against in a fight. Okay. I'm not afraid of that dude in a big moment. Hey. Miami with now, the bright I lights are on. Adama Sonogo, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to see him in the street I, fight. I think UConn's more <laughs> physical. If you're talking street UConn fight, UConn is more physical. If you're talking street fight. But you're saying Miami? Physical. But that's about. I'm it. saying Miami. I'm that, saying like if if this is a taught let because let's say this like game context put into this. Who who his decision? UConn's Atlanta? UConn's a favorite, right? UConn's a favorite. Let's say Miami <laughs> does the thing. Where they're down 10, and all of a sudden they're not they're with four hours, minutes yeah. left. Yeah. Like the, the momentum of the game, the swing of the game, the avalanche of Miami, doing the comeback Miami thing is the most terrifying thing left in the Final Four to me. Hey, I'll say this. The only reason why I, I say that, one, we both we all agree, close game favors Miami. Uh-huh. You know what you're getting defensively. They're going to hard hedge ball screen. And I thought, I think moving the ball and being able to attack closeouts, I think no one is better than that than Miami. I, I can't disagree with that. Like they, and they have many different guys that can do it. And that's the matchup problem. Because most teams have maybe their point guard that's really good off ball screens. Maybe they're two. They can attack you with any four of those guys. And the other thing is, nor Chad on Mir's ability to put the ball on the floor and drive you from the perimeter is... is well, let me ask you this on the on the path because we we yelled at me about the path whether Jim is right or not. About <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna that. yell at you again. Go ahead. But if UConn doesn't win every game by 20, do we think that the path is harder? Like, oh, they had to win a buzzer no. beater no, no, against. No, no, no. They no. Are you sure? Are they you sure won. that that no, doesn't twist? No, no. I'm only stating the teams. I'm not knocking them for it. You're here. I, listen, yeah, yeah. I, I wish I could play. Well, I wouldn't say that now, but give me a 15, 16 seed for four rounds if I could. Long as you get here, you're here. It doesn't yes, matter. I you agree. Play. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't care. I'm not knocking them for it. You play who you. But play. you are saying Miami's is harder, which but I think I'm you're just right. I'm saying that we look at the record, and I that team has played, like you said, Drake, Indiana, Houston, and Texas. Well, my honest opinion, I think you would have. We would be talking about the path a little differently. Real talk, if it had been UCLA in the regional final, you, not Gonzaga. Let's be honest. You have people. Gonzaga didn't you have enough. some people voting Indiana can make it to the final four. Texas. Crazy people. Crazy. True, people. true, but yeah. some. But people. But they were, let me say this. Oh. From, from a guy who's followed the Big Ten. Yeah. Weren't they the team that people thought in the Big Ten that probably would go to Fathers? In, in, Michigan in State. Theory, yes, because they had the guard that's and the front court. That's, all, that's, yeah. all I'm, that's I'm, fair. I'm not saying they would But it's Trace Jackson Davis, RC. Uh, uh, Michigan uh, State. The one does shade on Trace Texas and Houston. You had to have one of them two in there, right? I did. I picked Houston to win it all. I picked him in the preseason, so I do I do love you. All right, I'm going to transition. You just brought up, now you got my brain swirling. Get it going. This is a very smart panel here. <laughs> They're all, they all have their brain. So my question is, let's just say, let's just say right now, okay, I named you Big Ten Commissioner. 
and you're going to be the associate commissioner. So you're going to of the Big Ten. Of the Big Ten. Okay. All right. Commissioner, I'm so sorry. We suck. <laughs> like, I'm like, already fired. Jim's ready to there. jump off a bridge right now. <laughs> All right, wait. Commissioner Waddell. Commissioner Waddell. Yes. What is your first message to your basketball coaches over the phone? Can we please change some shit up? Honestly, because I went on this rant last week, Fanta. I don't think you've heard this. I don't know that anybody's heard this from me. I think one guy has ruined Big Ten basketball. Looking Stop back on the it. last 10 years. One guy. And it's not the guy you think I'm going to say. It's going to come out of nowhere here. Who? I think the man that has ruined oh, no. Big Ten basketball is Isaac Haas. Oh, come on. It's Isaac Haas. Are we really? No, because hear me out. Hear me out. Matt Painter, Matt Painter just fielded good basketball teams for years and years and years. And then he realized, oh, when I get a seven foot four dude, it's easy. <laughs> No, hear me out. <laughs> it's out Purdue, Purdue. It's like an arms race for big guys. They're all it? trying well, to counter Purdue. You think instead Tom of Izzo's doing that? I Tom. do. To an extent, I do. But he doesn't have front court this year. Well, that's because he's stubborn. Booty ball didn't do he's it. Still, he tried. He wanted Monty right. Your associate, associate commissioner, commissioner has a message as well. Yeah, like what? What do we need to do to see one of these Big Ten teams make it? Get some guards. Get some guards. Did UConn bring in more guards in the portal than the entire Big Ten? No. UConn brought in four of them. Eh. Well, how many did the Big Ten bring I mean, in? Jalen Pickett was a transfer guard. Tyson Walker but, but was but a like transfer this guard. Year. Jameer Young was a transfer guard. But this guard. year. I guess Young was this year. I mean, it's uh, that's like I'm exaggerating. Hyperbole for effect. But there needs to be better guard play in the Big Ten. Sure. That's the problem. Sure. The Wait, problem let's is do this right now. Let's do this. Next, your, your commissioner tags, you're both fired. Yeah, you're both <laughs> uh, fired. The next, the next three to five years, next three to five years, give me your top four leagues in the country that you bet on are the top four. Bet on in what way? Bet on to have like a that national has to win titles? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. talking top Because yeah. like, I don't think the ACC is close to a top four league in the country right now, but having a national champion? Because, yeah, the depth is not there. <laughs> but the high-end ACC Listen, stuff is... Like, Miami's going to keep I doing it. I have this. not had enough drink alcohol in me to listen to this right now. You guys are going to stop. All I say to you is this, and I've said this before. I think the ACC has been undivided. I'm not saying what it was, what it was when I played or other guys in recent years. I'm not, that's just, it's not as strong as it's been. But I do believe it's better than the narrative that's out there. It's better than the narrative, but if you look at the ACC's record, I'm sorry I'm going to do quad stuff, but like first Because they did one, win the ACC Big Ten Challenge, right? No, it's more than that. Like their record was the seventh best in the country versus like quad one, quad two. They had man, a ton of quad four I don't want to hear about them analytics, it matters, man. But that stuff matters. That's why you That's why you get <laughs> man, knocked on. Give me that analytical crap. why you get crap. knocked come tournament times because you need to build You know resumes. why I, I say there is a and place for analytics, but as much as you make those arguments, you can flip the numbers at times to whatever you want them to be. But here, like, who they are the good teams games. this year? And the they segment has turn. imploded. They didn't win like, big games in the non-conference. All right, wait a minute. You didn't select your four conferences, then we got a break. I thought they deserved to be in, but anyway. Big 12. Big, big 12, Big East, SEC. That's oh, my, that's fourth my top fourth I, I dare you. I'll go ACC oh, I dare you. I would oh, say ACC fourth. I dare you to say I that. I mean, I'm not going Pac-12 or Big 10. They haven't won since 2096, respectively. The fourth one's the Big 10. The fourth one's the Big 10. They haven't won since 2000. They won Stop the Purdue's, you don't believe Purdue that. Purdue is still closer. Purdue listen to me. Closer. Listen to me. Right now, I can make the argument. You just right said Purdue's number one in the country next year. I you said it to me two hours ago. Who said that? Before Mark Mitchell said he's coming back. Oh, I can make that. <laughs> okay, so they're number two. So they're number two. <laughs> I can make that. No, he, he moved him back Armando, to like 12. Armando Baker yeah. came back. Yeah, they bumped oh. to like three. Purdue's yeah, like dropping yeah. three. Duke and like Carolina are one and two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Duke and yeah. Carolina are one yeah. and two. Yeah. You know. okay. All right, we got a break. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. We're at 40 below. We're at Bayou Music Center. This is the Field of 68. Now a word from our sponsors. You know what the best part about the God. end of the college basketball season is? That signifies the start of spring, the start of summer, the start of hot weather, the start of late nights, the start of weekends on the water, and the best way to stay refreshed during the summer months is with Hornitos Ranch Water, a premium sparkling cocktail with a balance of freshly squeezed lime paired with smooth tequila notes. Hornitos Tequila is a 100% agave premium tequila from the lowlands of Jalisco. It's specifically from the town of Tequila. 
originating from one of the most historic distilleries, Hornitos paved the way for all future tequila brands, starting with the tequila name. An official partner of the Houston Astros, you can buy Hornitos Ranch Water in a can, or you can come to Houston's best sports bar, Little Woodrow's in Edo, and get a fresh, handmade cocktail with Hornitos Tequila. There's nothing better on a warm spring day than Hornitos Ranch Water and a Houston Astros baseball game. Welcome back to the Field of 68 from the Final Four in Houston. We are live from 40 Below at the Bayou Music Center. I'm John Fanta. He's Greg Waddell. Coach McCall, Matt McCall, is with us tonight, and we've got Terrence Oglesby. All right, fellas, we broke down Miami UConn. I want to get to the nitty-gritty of FAU and San Diego State. Please. You brought the right guy in. Let's go. Please. Coach McCall. Please, everyone's already anointing the national champion. From the Miami UConn game. Everyone's anointing the national champion. Let's why? talk FAU San Diego State. Number one, why is FAU here? And number two, why can't they win Saturday against the Aztecs? Because of their culture. Because of their unselfishness. Because of the celebrate the, the way those guys celebrate each other's success. I've talked about it all year. I think they have an unbelievable staff. Their players exact culmination of what their staff is. Their staff is connected, their staff is together, and that's how those players play. They're also really talented. I think a big key in this game is Vlad Golden. I've been saying it all week. They've got to find a way to get him the ball early in this basketball game, dump it inside to him. But man, they've got balance, they're deep, they're top 50 in both defense and offense. You know, they're one of the best teams in this country. I think Golden's the key to the whole thing. Vlad right? Golden? Vlad Golden's the key to the whole thing. He's got he's to play his role as well as he's done all tournament long. And he's not intimidated by this side. There's some of these other guys. Uh-oh, we got Cowboy Hat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Holy cow. Want some Hawaiian rolls? It was the King Hawaiian dunk contest. Who, who won the dunk contest? I don't know. Kamari Brown did from uh, Georgia Southern. How you guys doing? Yeehaw. How's Ed Cooley doing? You talked to Ed Cooley lately? You know, I came down to Texas and I found nowhere to put the water. Nowhere to put the water. You know, I've used all of it the last two hours calling that competition upstairs. How you guys doing? You guys ready for the Final Four? Great. Excited. You come out guns a blazing tonight. Well, You've I'm, got a cowboy hat. I reckon we're going to have a good time here. He's right? embracing yeah. Houston. Oh, with the He's embracing Rob. Houston. He's How embracing. You doing? Doing great. You look great, man. Thanks, man. You look Appreciate great. it. Hey, Last you know time what? I saw you in person, SoCon championship. With the SoCon championship and in I 2016, and we won. And then you were gone. And then I was gone. <laughs> and then you were gone. there for two years. Which is it was a quick stay. You were there for two years. Two years. Right? Yep. Two years. Did a great job. You know what? The SoCon tournament, one of the great tournaments. You know, and Asheville, how about North Carolina. That, that, that Asheville venue is pretty cool. It is. It it's a great awesome. place to do tournaments. So much of Champ Week is great. You know, the yeah. venues are so important. Yep. Um, you know, being here at the Final Four, it's always a great closure, right, to the season. We all love, we all love the sport. Yeah. And coming out of COVID, there was so much disconnect where we didn't get to spend we time with each other and just have a great time. How much fun is it to be back here? You know, Orleans was great last year, obviously. This year, a completely different feel to the Final Four in large part because of the teams that we have. I mean, look at Childress is here. Everybody's here. RC. We brought the whole roster, We're baby. We're here, baby. We're and here. It's so good that Goodman's not here. You know, I mean, it makes it so much better. Jeff is off tonight. If Jeff was here, what is he I'd taking walk a nap? Away. What is he taking a nap? Yeah, he had a judge, so he's going to bed night, night time. Has stars. he ever? How awful. His, awful. When did he ever dunk? Yeah, that's what I said. I asked, I asked the question. Has he ever made a layup? Probably not. The oh, only no. thing he's dunked is a munchkin. Yeah, that's, that's it. That could be true. Do you know what I said In about Hummel? I said, uh, and I, we're doing the announcement. I'm doing everybody all serious. I get to Hummel and I go, I go, ladies and gentlemen, one of the great all-time dunkers in Purdue history. <laughs> it's the big dog and it's Robbie Hummel. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people are buying it. Do you think they're buying it? That's a tough uh, one. No. That's a he did have a tip dunk once. That I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> oh, I, I did, did see it, it on YouTube. Hey, and he'll, he'll share that video real oh, quick. Sure. With since, yeah. sure. since we have you right here right now. As you were, he, by the way, he was in a full-on squat for about three minutes. I give him a lot of credit because we don't have a chair here. Um, what's your message to America about this Final Four? You know, I, I think in a season where we, we, we've said it all year long, right, there wasn't that elite great team. There was a lot of good teams, yeah. but there wasn't great teams. You know, when I, when I looked at the bracket, I only had one number one seed getting to the Final Four. I thought it was going to be Alabama. Um, 
But, you know, injuries were a big part of this this run through the tournament, too. I, I think Mick Cronin and UCLA, not just because I went there, but yeah, I think if tough. that team's healthy, if they have Clark and Bona, they're probably here. You know, I think if Marcus Sasser and Jamal Shedd were healthy 100%, maybe they're here. But it, it's hard to look at this field and not say that these are four teams that have a clear identity of who they are. Yeah. They play to that identity on a consistent basis. That's what makes Florida Atlantic so well. They right. move so well without the ball. Their floor spacing is really good. They got to value the basketball, though, because if they turn it over 20 times, That's like tough. they did in the Elite Eight against San Diego State, they're going to lose by 20 because yeah. San Diego State has an identity of who they are. Right. And it's been a consistent identity since the Fisher era, now to Dutch. Uh, and I know it means a lot, obviously, to be here, Coach Fisher here as well, uh, and what that means for this program. 50 alumni are coming into town for this thing. Uh, they're big, they're strong, they're old. Yeah. You know, you that's look the at, big one. The old, they're old, 24 yeah. and 25. You look at you look at Miami. How great is the story for Jim Laranega? I mean, he's old too. And and, and he said I, I had them back in but November. He's still dancing. He is he's very old. old. He's still dancing. I had, I had him in November at the uh, Mohegan Sun event. You were there with me. And you know, you look at him. He said, you say, hey, small ball, and then they go to smaller ball. And North Chad O'Meara. How about coming in from Arkansas State, knowing exactly who he is, what yeah. he has to do, just rebound the ball, man, and that's, that's all he's done. You know, the, the point that I took away from today's media availabilities at, at NRG Stadium was this. Like, as I you, love the Hawaiian rolls, by the way. The uh, this is a Christmas that's staple. Great. That is this awesome. This is a Christmas staple at the that Fanta household, awesome. which probably explains a lot about other things. But um, let's t- talking about th- these teams, like Brian Dutcher said it, he goes, look, he goes, not for nothing. We are 107 and 22 in the last four seasons. Yep. We're the fifth winningest program since 2009. Like he didn't get out of bed and eat something different for breakfast. Now it's just the breakthrough that's happened. Well, and that's the thing. Like people always talk about it, and like we act like they're a mid-major program. Has anybody ever been to the Bayhaus Arena? Yeah. Have you ever seen the show? Yeah. The awesome. show is one of the best student sections in the country. I was there when Lorenzo Wade had a dunk back in the day with Tom Hart on the call on CSTV. That's how wow. long. That's how long ago it was. And three dudes took off their shirt and started running up and down the stairs. And I'm yelling, they took off their shirt. They're running up and down the stairs, Tommy. And it just, you know, it's been a special program for a long period of time. I was there on the call when they really had their first national breakthrough. And that was winning in the tip-off marathon against Gonzaga in Spokane. Billy White, Kawhi Leonard. Billy White had over 30 that night. But it was the first time the nation really got to see Kawhi Leonard and how special he was. Unbelievable to see that group in this program get there. Yeah. You've done a lot of Pac-12. Obviously, you associate a lot with the Mountain West. How big is it for that conference to have a team get to the well, Final Four? Gloria Navarro, the, the, the first-time commissioner, just left the WCC. She is letting everybody know she took over the conference, and they have a right. Final Four team. Right. You know, she wanted four teams in the field. They had four teams in the field. You know, I think that's the other thing that we should look at here is conference affiliation and conference success. What's yep. CUUSA right now? 17-1 and one in the postseason. And they swept the other two. You know, they got, they got, they're playing for the championship right now in the, the NIT. NIT. Right. You know, I mean, college basketball, because of the transfer portal. The extra year. Because of the extra year, yeah. it has been spread out a little bit more. And that doesn't mean that the talent on these teams is that much better than other programs and there weren't more talented teams that could be here. But the consistency and the belief in these programs, and as I mentioned, the identity and the clear understanding, you know as a coach, when your team buys into everything that you say and that relationship and that trust is there, you can do, you can make some magic. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Farnham. There he is. Oh, no, we got to get his pick. Unbelievable. Pick? Oh, yeah, who do you like? Who's your pick? San Diego State and UConn. Uh, I think UConn's size is going to be too much for Miami. Uh, they gotta, they got to make sure they don't turn it over, obviously, because Miami is so good at forcing turnovers, led the ACC in points off of turnovers. Uh, but rebounding wise and that toughness and that edge, I think Danny Hurley's team just got it. I think the smartest move an athletic department has made in the last 10 years is to say, you know what, the American's not working for us. Let's go back to the Big East. Let's go back to our geographical footprint. Let's identify that we are a basketball school and let's say, go win. They hired the right coach, they made the right move, and they look phenomenal. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm having some King Hawaii Hawaiian and probably some water because my voice Rose. sounds really hoarse right now after the last two hours. Yeah. Good luck with that. I really need the footage of the old suit game, hair game, shoe game at CSTV at San Diego State with awesome. Tom Hart. Brown suit, like suit suit, <laughs> brown suit with stripes. You it was full, so awful. Full brown suit. Awful. Tom, more people hired you. Tom Hart has the suit. They looked past the suit and they were like, Farnham will be okay. Let's just get him a stylist. Yeah, there you, you go. guys have a great rest Sean of your night. Thank you, Sean Farnham. We're going to take a break. We're going to be on Sirius XM after these messages. This is the Field of 68 from the Final Four.
Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the Field of 68. We welcome you to the Field of 68 After Dark from the Final Four from Houston, Texas. We are at 40 below inside Bayou Music Center. Thanks to Intersport for having us tonight. We're presented by Bat Rivers, presented by Underdog Fantasy. John Fanta, Rob Doster, Jeff Goodman here with the Hall of Famer, head coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers, Bob Huggins. Coach, it is great to see you here in Houston. Thanks for taking some time with us. Pleasure to be here with you all. And Jeff Goodman actually asked you to do a hit, and you said yes to it. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, I still say maybe my favorite, and this is a story. I'm not going to repeat the story I just talked about, but I will say you, me, Andy Kennedy, Frank Martin, you guys telling stories outside in Augusta, Georgia, about 10 years ago. I probably said 10 words the whole time. All I did was listen, and it might have been the greatest, might have been four hours of my life. 10 too many, by the yeah, way. Yeah. 10 too many. No, we had fun. I mean, we, we enjoy being around each other. We have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I think as soon as Frank and AK retire, we may take a spot here at your, at your table here <laughs> and be a hell of a lot more entertaining. I got to so. see Frank now. You know, he's only about a, a couple hours from me. So he, he gets mad. I haven't been up there enough to, to Amherst Mass, but all there are are like cows out there, Hugs. I spent two hours with Frank this morning. You did? Oh, really? yeah. How did that go? No, no, it was good. It was great. Spent two hours with him. We're talking about our game. We're talking about what needs to change in our game. We're talking about all the, all the things that I think are necessary for make this even greater. And Frank and I what, were sitting there side by side. What's the biggest thing that needs to – I mean, everything happened at once. NIL, the portal. Yeah. I mean, everything happened at once. I feel like what? What well, is the, if you're the if you're the president right now? Thank God, Mark Emmert is not the president anymore. Charlie Baker will be better. I tr trust me, he's going to be better. Can't be worse. I don't. I don't doubt that. I don't. I don't doubt that at all. But I mean, we spent really a year or two just kind of floundering around, and I mean, it's that that that's hard. It's, it, it's really what I feel really bad for are our players that went through that, that really two-year period where they had nothing to look forward to, absolutely nothing to look forward to. And, and my, my hope and my prayer is that we make it what at one time it was where you grew up aspiring to be able to play in the Final Four. You were up aspiring to be able to make it to a national championship and play for a national championship. And that's, I mean, I think that's what our our guys today have missed out on. And, you know, and I've had guys who came from the portal who that's what they wanted, but it was not available to them. And I think that needs to change. Coach, we got Andy Kennedy coaching in the NIT title game coming up here on, well, is that tonight. Tuesday? Tonight? tonight. tonight. Yeah, is it happening right now? Yeah. AK yeah. was probably at the blackjack table before the game. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't surprise you. I just hope he won. 
<laughs> at blackjack or the game? I mean, Both? Which would he rather win at, the blackjack table or the game? <laughs> Given the choice. Oh, absolutely the game. All right. All right. It's, a, hey, it's a legitimate question. Absolutely the game, but the blackjack table when you win is a lot of fun. <laughs> I just came from Vegas. I got my ass kicked the last night. Listen, I Charlie Spoonhour was my best friend in the world. And, and Charlie was the absolute greatest. And then Charlie moved from St. Louis to Bad move. the gambling Bad move devil him. of the world. Right. And, right. and we would sit and play blackjack and win, lose, whatever. I had more fun sitting with Charlie Spoonhour than I would of anything else in the world. And I love him to this day. I miss him. You know, God bless you, Charlie. I know you're, I know you're in heaven and entertaining folks up there. What were you going to ask? Well, I, you answered my... Is that my, your AK question? No, I, I, I was going to ask about the game tonight, and we answered the question. So I'm going to go with this. The Big 12 out in Houston, out in UCF, adding BYU, adding Cincinnati. With these teams in the league, how, how tough is it going to be, nightly basis, to play all of that? You want the honest answer? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. That's why I asked you. We don't, you don't want, the, we don't want false. Hugs, when have you not given an honest answer? Yeah. We don't want I feel sorry for them. <laughs> <laughs> they have absolutely no idea what they're getting into. This is... I've been in a lot of leagues. You know that. I've yeah. been in a lot of leagues. And I've been in a lot of leagues with the best coaches in America and with the best players in America. And I'm telling you right now, the hardest league that I've ever coached in, ever, and the, the best fan bases, you go in and they may have just, they may be 3-17, and 17. And they've got 14,000 people Tech. sitting in. Was, I mean, it's unbelievable yeah. Yeah. the fan support, how good the players are, how good the coaching is. It is such a hard, hard league, and you got to go through it twice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, they're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. No. Not many teams are. Um, hugs. I gotta ask you this one, you, and you can plead the fifth. You can, you cannot answer it. I've never ran from one. I know you haven't, but this one's difficult even <laughs> for me to ask. Obviously, your contract situation, everything that's going there. You're laughing, but but honestly, like, how how are you handling this right now? Because to me, you're Bob Huggins. You're at West Virginia. You should decide when you're done. You should decide. You should have the right. You're a Hall of Famer. I'm not saying this because you're next to me. I would say this if you're nowhere near me. To me, what, what's going on there? What, what is going on? There isn't anything going on. We changed athletic directors. Our new athletic director is a basketball guy who understands basketball. He understands. He watches. He understands. He's the head of... Uh, uh, of what's going on tonight, hoping Andy Kennedy wins the championship. But I'm happy. I think they're happy. I know the state of West Virginia. So can we give you a few more years with what's going on? You're not ready to call it quits, are you? I don't want you to give me anything. No, you earned it. But I'm saying, can I'll, we extend right. four more years? What, I mean, how old are you now? I don't need four more years. I need, I need to be able to continue to coach as hard and as well as I can coach. And when I decide that enough's enough, and 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 that's what they're giving me. They are. And that's what. Okay, good. That's what they think I deserve. But more importantly, you do. That's what the people of West Virginia deserve. And that's the most important thing to me. The most important thing to me is that we carry on what we've established for this state and the expectations that we have for this state. You know, today Jim Laranagas up at the podium, and he says, 
I know everybody asks me about when I'm going to hang it up, but why the hell would I? He goes, I, I separate all the stuff that's going on with his NIL, and he was in the headlines all throughout last summer. He goes, I separate all that. He goes, I tell my players, I'll see you at 3 o'clock. I came here to coach basketball. And he goes, I still love doing that. How would you reflect on that mindset and, and how much that's the frame of mind for a coach like you in 2023? Well, here's what y'all don't understand. I was at the University of Akron when Jim was at Bowling Green. That's crazy. That's <laughs> nice. So, I forgot that. So you've known, you've known him for a while. Played, against him? We played and we have known each other forever and ever and ever and so you don't got to worry about guys like us we we understand each other uh we communicate with each other and we're going to continue to deliver for people what makes him so good larinaga he's a heck of a coach he's a heck of a coach he's done a great job at bringing in the right people at the right time and he, he, he technically he does a lot of things right and i can tell you that from my days at akron coaching against bowling green all the way through uh, we we played him when i was at cincinnati the guy's a heck of a coach and he finds ways to get the right people open at the right time last question i got for you coach Field of 68 after dark. This show started yeah. because me, John Fanta, and Deshaun Butler were doing live streams after tournament games. It took off yeah. after Deshaun Butler left. Do you think that's a coincidence? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Deshaun's the smartest of the three of you? <laughs> well, that's true. It is true. true. <laughs> By best, far the most successful. You want a champion in the garden. Best I'm looking, looking around. I mean, Day might have been the smartest of the, the, of the rest of you. And, Coach, Ed. you're definitely right. So, at least one of us. That's my guy. All right. Listen. I look back. I get caught. I'm not kidding you. As a college hoops junkie, I get caught watching him hit the game winner against Georgetown, and Doris Burke is talking to you at center court, and she says to you, what is it about this championship? And you said, it's West Virginia University, and it's the Big East, and it's Madison Square Garden on a Saturday night. Yeah. No question, but here's what you forgot. Deshaun hit the game winner, I think, against it was Cincinnati. Then he hit the game winner against, I don't know, somebody else. And then he hit the game winner against somebody else. And then he hit the game winner to win the championship. He hit four game winners. Four. And I don't know that's ever happened again no in way. any league in America. And that guy, you know, it's, you call timeout, they're like, Coach, what are we doing? Give it today. Right, give it today. <laughs> like, what do you want to run? Give it today. <laughs> and he made the shot. Makes you look real smart. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes Coach. players make you look smart. <laughs> Listen, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I do know who to give the ball to. <laughs> you know, Coach, you're never going to – You're. I should say this this way. You're not going to go back and watch this clip. So I am going to bring in the expert here. He, he's, a, he's our expert. Huh. What's this guy – you're going to close this out. You're uh, on a serious. Yeah. What's this guy mean to college basketball? Everything. Everything. Here, here's the thing with hugs. I say this to everybody. There's nobody more revered within the coaching profession than this guy. Period. Nobody. Nobody. Everybody wanted him in the Hall of Fame. Everybody. You don't know how many That's calls I got. Mm -hmm. And then I called them. I called them by the Hall of Fame. I said, I want to write a story. I want to write a story about pushing you to. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want that. Doesn't mean anything to me. It means something to you. It does mean something to you to be in the Hall of Fame, but it means more for everything that you've accomplished for those kids. Like that's there's no bullshit, zero bullshit with this guy. In in an era in which so many coaches are full of shit, this guy Frank Martin, Andy Kennedy, that crew, Brad Underwood, not a lot of bullshit. They're old school. But I think what you've done a good job. Listen, you've gotten a little soft in your old age. <laughs> you, you have. You've gotten a little softer. Haven't we all? Yeah. yeah I know <laughs> I have. But you, hey, you were an mf -er back in the day. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. 
I still have contact with the guys that I coached at Ohio State, the guys that I coached at Walsh College, the guys I coached at the University of Akron, on and on and on. And they continue to call, they continue to write, they continue to, i tell you a story, one of my guys, I don't want to ever mention names, but this guy says to me, Coach, can I come and spend time with you? He, he, and he was my center. I said, absolutely. Came down, he had dinner with me. We went to the game, he came back. I'm like, we got plenty of rooms, man, pick your room. Stayed with me. Woke up the next day, came to practice. Went to the game the next day. We had something to eat. Comes back to my, 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 uh, my house. Goes back, sleeps in the same bed he slept in the night before. Gets up, he's like, Coach, I got to get back. And I'm like, hey, fine, man. You know, whatever you got to do. They called me about 18 hours later. Just passed away. And I'm like, I'm like, my God. You know, what is it? What happened? And I think, I thank the good Lord every day that I got to spend the time that I got to spend with them. And that's what people don't realize. That's that's what those, that's what you coach for. Right? Those are my people. Yeah, that's yeah. what you coach. Those for. are the people that I love. Those Your loyalty. That, listen, if there's one word associated with you, it's loyalty. It is. It's loyalty. This dude. I mean, he'll go to bat for you if you're his guy. I mean, he'll fight you. All right, Hugs, go go get a drink. Bob, thank you. Go get a drink. Go get something to eat. How's that? I, I'm going to go over there and find my guys. I think Bob I lost George. them. Bob yeah. George. All right, listen. Coach As Bob always, Huggins, the Hall of Famer. Pleasure, Bob, thank guys. you yeah. so much. And I feel bad you had to see Frank great for two hours. Great to have Coach Huggs on. We'll be back right. with more here on the Field of 68. Today's episode of the Field of 68 After Dark is presented by our partners over at Underdog Fantasy. The easiest place to play college basketball pick 'em, where you can win real cash prizes simply by picking player stats in this weekend's Final Four games. And pick 'em, all you do is pick whether a player will go higher or lower on underdog's projected totals, whether it's points or rebounds or assists or all of them combined. If you're like me and you think Adama Sonogo is going to go nuts this weekend, Pick higher on his points projection. Pick higher on his rebounds projection. Maybe throw in a lower on Matt Bradley's scoring totals. A higher on Isaiah Wong. Whatever it is that you like. Put them all together. And if you hit them all, then you can win as much as 20 times your money on a single game. Underdog Slick Mobile app is easy enough that dummies like Jeff Goodman have even figured out how to use it. So go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app and use the code FIELD, that's F-I-E-L-D, to get a 100% deposit match up to Back to the field of 68 from the final four. We are at the Bayou Music Center in Houston at 40 below Sirius XM College, Channel 84, YouTube, and Twitter. Jeff Goodman, Dallin Cuff is here. We've got Robbie Hummel. How the He's hell did here. Hummel get on this show? Who the hell let him on? Well, I, I just tried to sit down, and then you kicked me off so that Coach Huggins could sit. Dude, there. if there's a camera, Hummel will find it. That's He's on every night. Tell him this guy. In I don't all, know about that. Fairness. If you have a choice to talk to Bob Huggins or Robbie Hummel, who are you talking to? Well, off camera, I'm definitely talking to Huggins. No, no. On, <laughs> off, whatever. I don't know. I mean, Huggins off camera, it gets really aggressive. Oh. That's how? Some good stuff. How in the hell? How in the hell? I'm watching your show earlier this week, and I'm seeing the residents in cabinets in the background, T-shirt and all. How do you do a show with him every week? The fact that he was in Vegas... For like a week straight on a bender and then trying to be like, I work really hard. I, I'm a really hard worker. I After he was in Charleston, 
For two months. Two months. He two months in Charleston. He had the, the pool Wait, at Circa. He, for two months. Six he six was weeks. hanging out. Oh, hanging out. Six weeks. I was yeah. following. I was following. Pat Kelsey. Yeah, right. Yeah. Covering, covering Pat team. Kelsey. And the the amount the that team. there is no one I have ever seen talk more about work conditions than him. No, I like agree. Like stories. Then he's got you like taking over Valpo. I, yeah, he's putting me up for the job. I did. I put his name in the oh, ring for you, Valpo. You want to coach Valpo? I want to put no, my hat in the ring. He doesn't no. want to, <laughs> but I'm putting it in there anyway. Oh, okay. I have so zero that's years experience. For you. I know you work really hard. Uh, I, mean, I, I have zero <laughs> years experience, so I think I am very prepared to throw my hat in that ring. All right, let's turn to what we've got ahead this weekend. We've asked everybody that's been on this panel what their thoughts are. Your take on this Final Four is? Um, I think people said like hey is this going to be like the new norm to have two fives a four and a nine bear in mind last year was a very a year that had a ton of parity too and we had four blue bloods we had an eight seed that was carolina we had a one seed we had a two seed we had another two seed so it wasn't we had a very similar year but the outcome you can't predict it that's why this thing is called march madness we don't have no freaking clue as all of us sit there and do our brackets and i'm sure you're sucked and you're sucked and you're sucked Mine was a disaster, and that's just how this thing goes. And we watch it every night. And, it, it, like, and that makes other than I, I'm can. <laughs> well, no, he, he works every night. every night. We watch every right. night. Exactly. But he, like, you're, like you're, you think you know what the hell you're talking about. We really don't. It's, it's, it's chaos. But that's, that's what the tournament is. I do think you'll see through the course of every year more parity. When we get to the end, it's just the same, it's the same old thing. It's a crapshoot. This Final Four will be entertaining. I think the first game will be really be close with San Diego State and FAU, just how the game is going to be played. The next game, more entertaining. Could be a bigger chance for a blowout. I'm not saying UConn's going to blow them out, but the way they play, if you don't play well either team, it could get ugly. That's all. I think it's going to be fascinating to see as the COVID players move out yeah. and the fifth-year guys move out, what does that do to some of these smaller schools that have had the parity and have won in the NCAA tournament? Because that's going to – we got, this. what, two more years? Two more years, two more years of COVID? Yeah, it's going to be fascinating I'm to see how that – I'm done. Like well, I, I want it over. I do. I just look, tough break for those kids that went through COVID. Get them years. out. We don't need 26 year olds in college now. I probably was about 26 when I was still in college, but but I mean you were. <laughs> well, like I said you were 25. <laughs> Where you? Everyone what are you says that. I played Isn't five that years. You're telling I played him five to get years out. of college basketball. It's Everyone said it was seven. Adam it was five. Seiko's on six. Yeah, exactly. Adam Seiko, way more experience than I had. <laughs> what year are you on in your profession? Lot, How about this lot. one? I'm embarrassed you right now. Two freaking days in a row. Two freaking days in a row. He's at Starbucks. He goes, can I get a straw? We're both getting nice drinks. They bring up the straw. They bring up the straw. Hummel, I kid you not. Where's the, where's the hole? I can't find For the, it. He can't find. Are you blind? Dude, is a disgrace. So. You should, you should <laughs> have seen him judge the dunk contest tonight. Oh, I was great. In the first, I was the best in the first, judge. First of all, if I you, was the elite. How, judge. how about humility? This I was the best judge. Okay. How is that judge wow. upon? He's, he he's made no layups in a college basketball game, yet he can judge a college dunk contest. Which he's never dunked in his life. Were you harsh? So he's not qualified for one. Jumped, but then, in the first round, he was giving players who didn't even complete a dunk fours and then in the second round we had a guy. we had a player lay it up and make it <laughs> in the game of three how does that make sense he made it his his last three quotes have been i'm a good guy yeah. i'm done with covid yeah. and yeah. I what the and other i'm the best was. judge i'm the best judge who was the who was the second best judge not home phyllis <laughs> phyllis definitely no doubt. Yeah. Jay did a great Yo, job. Who won, by the way? We were, uh, I was the working for Georgia Southern. He was, yeah, he was I, really good. He, he, really he good. was good. Yeah, he was there was really good dunks. Creative dunks. Yep. Creative like dunks that you've ne I've never yeah. seen. Yeah. Like one That's of the hard kids, to do right now. Darius McGee went up, made a layup, and the kid came from underneath and, and like windmilled it from behind. Like, okay. I've never seen anybody do that. Fun. It was good. No, we did creativity. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's Here, here's my thing. Go ahead. Today. Go ahead. When I went, when I went to the media day today, it really hit me the difference yes. last year, Duke, Carolina, Villanova, Kansas, and you had media day was packed, packed, like they couldn't find a seat. Today you go, there's like five people in there for FAU. There's like 10 people in there for San Diego State. There might have been 20 people, 25 people for UConn. It just doesn't have the same juice, whether it's media-wise. I'm, I'm very curious to see what the arena 
is going to look like Saturday yeah, night. I, know. I don't know. Well, also in this town, though, too. Right. Like, this town is not like a college basketball nope. hotbed. Right. And there's got the Astros going on the same night. Yeah. Somebody told me there's a, I think there's a, a Rockets Two game, Rockets too. Two Rockets games, Friday and Sunday. Which is, which is a, like in between, in between games. One of them is the Lakers. So I think your point is well taken. Also, I would I ask you this. Is there a bigger college basketball issue, though, there? Because in Radio, in Radio Row, as you did, your, I mean, it was quiet in there. Yeah. No, nobody, I, I right? Think, I think it's a, there's a bigger, yeah. I, I think it's like a bigger signal that, there are things college basketball that has to do to change, to what? garner audiences. What, what are they? What, what are, are they? they? What yeah. do they have I, to do? I think basically people boil it down to a three or four week sport now for the casual fan. Hey, I think scheduling has to totally change. I'm I over agree. conferences and I don't give a crap about conference games. And I don't think casual fans do either. Big Ten fans do. A ACC fans do. SEC. But if you're not connected, you want the big brands playing. So I think that you switch in up. In November the, and December, they better play. But but scheduled games. Like, right. forget like going to opening night. Opening night was, Horrible. was awful. Horrible. Uh, I, I think you need to, I think you have to have like every league come together and say, we're done doing non-conference conference. Mix it all up because yeah. nobody cares. And have 10 poll games every single month, maybe every week, between yeah. Blue Blood and so November. Yeah. I'm so in. And yeah. start doing that. And that yeah. will help things a little bit. But they won't do it. These guys won't do it. It like, requires a desire to change. Like, look at Buzz Williams is the greatest example. He knows this. Like Texas <laughs> A&M. Play somebody. You didn't get um, it. Now, you got in this year. Yeah, but last like year, you didn't get in because answer. you didn't play anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You go play a worse non-conference schedule this year. Yeah. Like, you can't do that. Yeah. You've got to – every. What? What are you laughing at? Me? No, we just both. The fact that you always go back five, to five. Buzz Williams. Because he doesn't play anybody. We like, said that would have been number they one. Made on the the NCAA tournament. Board. That's what his goal was. I mean, no. he accomplished but, but, his but goal. But here, go ahead. But here, there's Buzz. One, but I understand what you're saying. I agree with that. But I also want, like Mark Few said after they played uh, UCLA and Duke in the same week two seasons ago in yeah. Vegas, he was like, "We need this for college basketball." He knows it and he gets it. But we need him to get it. But he yeah. has to do it. No, 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 he has no, to do it because of his league. But I get that. But his thing is also, he has an understanding of the bigger picture. Sure. And you need, Hubert's got to yeah. feel the same way. Shire's got to feel the same yeah. way. Yeah. Izzo's got to feel, and, and the brand name schools. Because Buzz playing somebody is fine, and that's yeah. good for him. Yeah. But I'm talking about moving the meter. Yeah, yeah. There's like yeah. 12 yeah. schools that move yeah. the meter, and they all got to play each other. Yeah. Look, the, the other thing is this here. I, I just, waking up on the Monday after Selection Sunday, oh. when there are a bunch of guys who have busted their asses to make the NCAA tournament, and the talk on social media is what a guy in the portal is going to do for his next stop. Where is he going? What's he going to add? And is every portal add to a team not quality add by this coach? Quality add by this coach. Great Look, get. I get it. Great get. Great, great get. To me, I, I understand. I'm all for player movement. I'm all for that. But seeing over a thousand kids and Tower, he goes, I, I told my wife, honey, this, I'm sorry, but this is just one big sprint. He goes, I, I have to be on, like, we got to do something with that timeline to make it make a little bit more sense. Well, I asked a couple coaches today about that, too. It's like, what would you want? There's no good time. That's the worst time. Push it back but, a little bit. But I would, I would say you could even do it, the, you should do it Monday. Like, one week like, later. You should do it, like, basically, like, Next I, week. I would say next week. It's like a Wednesday. Let, yeah, let's, Wednesday. let's bask in the glow yeah, of a let, day or let two. Let the NCAA right. tournament be and the go. biggest story. Yes. And then after the season Glenn ends, Dutcher, we have whatever. whatever Dutcher the, was saying today how he had to make a recruiting call today. Come like, on. Why should he have to worry about that? It's stupid. Insane, yeah. it's stupid. It's like when Arkansas, our, um, Arkansas was contacting a transfer literally 12 hours after. And it goes all over Twitter. And what I do I transfer? In, I walked in the Gonzaga coaches room. And Roger Powell, their assistant, is FaceTiming a kid in the portal. From the locker room? Yeah. <laughs> Got to do it. Yeah, Got to. So wild. That's Otherwise, so wild. you're not getting dudes. You're done next year. You're three weeks behind the eight ball. Exactly, yeah. All right, we got 60 seconds here. Give me your prediction for the weekend. I just think UConn's playing too well, and I really like Miami. I, I think Miami's got dudes. I think UConn ends up playing San Diego State, and I think UConn's national champion. Right, UConn minus 125 is my favorite play on the board right now to win it all because I think there's a value play there. If they get by Miami, Miami's got dudes. Three guys always, sometimes four on the court that can create for themselves or a teammate. Most teams don't have that. That's, that's hard to defend. I think they get by them. I like the number, Miami five and a half. UConn to win that game. UConn to cut them down. Fair play.
Spoken like a guy on the daily wager. <laughs> yeah. Degenerate. Yeah, Harley. Right. <laughs> Complete and, degenerate. And what'd you make of this live segment from him? I mean. Yeah, I mean, we'll still see the, the contract negotiations. You're still in review? You're in there, review? There's zero chance I come back. How many contracts do you have? I'm not, I'm not coming back unless they fire Jeff. <laughs> if they fire Jeff, I'll well, sign back with Phil 68. That would be Dowster making the move. That'd be good. Rob. Come, Rob. If you fire Jeff, I'll come back next year. Sweet. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I'm Good back deal. next year. Robbie Hummel, Alan Cobb. Yeah. We'll be back with more on the Field of 68, Sirius XM College, Channel 84. You guys I ever get tired of trying to prove that you won an argument, that your takes weren't hot, they were just right? Well... I have an answer to all of your problems. Vaulted is a new sports prediction app that turns your opinions into facts. You can store all of your predictions and hot takes in your own vault now and forever. Challenge your friends, keep track of the results, and prove that you are, in fact, the smartest one in the room. Vaulted is also releasing a final four competition called their last four pool. What amounts to a hot take challenge, it has a $5,000 prize pool. Who doesn't like free money? I like free money. So if you like free money like me, then go and download the Vaulted app at the link below. Sign up for your free three-month trial and store your predictions now and forever. After dark, we are live in Houston, Texas, part of our Final Four coverage, sponsored by Bat Rivers, sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. We are at 40 Below at the Bayou Music Center. Jeff Goodman, Terrence Oglesby, John Fanta, pleased to be joined by the pride of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Patrick McCaffrey. Patrick, thank you for stopping by, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we come here to Houston, and... We're talking with, with national analysts about this Final Four. It's a different Final Four. What do you make of it, and what do you think it says about the current climate in college basketball? Yeah, you know, I think, I think, it's, I think it's really cool, first and foremost, that all these different teams can make it, and it's not the same four or five, six teams every year. I think it's really cool. I think me and my brother have been saying this the whole time. I think if you play this tournament over... There'd be four new teams. It'd be eight new teams in the yeah. Elite Eight. It'd be like, Good point. like you could play this. Start, we could start again tomorrow, and it would be like completely different results. So you know, I think that's the beauty of this tournament, right? In college basketball, it's a forty-minute game. You never know what you're gonna get, especially when, like, and I think something my dad always says that really like sticks with me about this tournament. Every team won their way to get here. Right. Like, right. There are no. There is right. no bad team in the NCAA tournament. There's big schools, there's small schools, but there's not one bad team. So you know, I think that's something that's really cool and says a lot about the tournament. So towards the end of the season, after you came back, you guys started to play better. What do you attribute that to with your guys going and making, making, getting some wins towards the end of the season? I thought Iowa could have made a run, and then yeah, you obviously know, things go the other way. Yeah, you know, we, we have a lot of talent, right? We had a lot of really good players, and, um, and you know, we played well in a lot of really big moments. I mean, winning at Assembly Hall is not easy to do, yep. and we made it look pretty easy. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff, and you take a lot of pride in that. And, you know, unfortunately, we didn't play well enough to advance in the tournament, but I, I, I do believe that, like like I said, you know, like, like I just said, all these different teams would advance, and I think we would advance again. And, you know, it just is what it is. We didn't play well that day. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's no excuses you can make for it. It's just, you know, we just have to be better in those in those moments. There's no, there's no excuse, and, I, and I'm, I'm confident that we'll keep working and we'll get better. All right, listen, I, I look at you, and I'm, I'm so proud of you. And I, honestly, I get emotional just looking at you. With everything you've gone through, you beat cancer, you took some time away this past year to deal with some mental health issues. Man, like, just talk to me about how hard it's been and, and, and why you took some time away. And again, coming back, what it's been like. 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's unique. Um, you know, my medical situation, I, I'm pretty comfortable saying, is probably like nobody's in college basketball. Uh, you know, I'm missing like a very primary, like a very important gland in your body, the thyroid. You can't gain weight, really, so either. It makes it, makes it right. really difficult. I've, I've, I've kind of figured out how to. I'm, I'm getting heavier, I'm getting stronger. But it's like I've met a, I've met a million different doctors, and, a, and a, a lot of work goes into it. You know, it's like it's... It's something I deal with every day, and you know my energy isn't the same as everybody else. You know, I, I, I sleep probably more than most people, and you know it's something that I gotta do with the rest of my life. You know, not having one, and I'm not I'm not making an excuse. It's just it's just different, and I think some of the anxiety and all that kind of stuff is is a physiological. I think there's a physiological relation to like not having a thyroid, and you know like. Yep. Like I take pills and stuff that are supposed to mask it, like the, the thyroid stuff, and, and you know it's just sometimes the pill's not the same as, as having the real plan. So you know, uh, but I'm really grateful for the doctors that we have, and you know it, it means a lot to to play at Iowa, to play in the Big Ten. I grew up and that was my dream. I wanted to play for my dad. I wanted to play in the Big Ten. You know I want to I want to play at Assembly Hall. I want to play in East Lansing. I want to play in Champaign, Illinois. I want to go in all these. I want to beat all these teams, and, I, and that's what I want to do, and that's what I live for, and that's what I work so hard for. So you know, I, the, but the thing, I guess the main thing I can say about that is I never, I never expected anything else from myself than to play in the Big Ten and to be a good player on good teams at Iowa. That's that's what I expected from myself. That's what I, that's the standard I'd help myself to. So nothing that happens out there surprises me. But you know, I'm just I'm grateful for it, and I and I work really hard for it. You look good now. How you feeling now? Like what? What's changed, or is it a constant battle? Yeah. You know, it, it's never just going to go away. It's always something that you know is going to, it's just going to waver in and out for, for the rest of my life. So, you know, it's never going to be totally gone. It's not a sprained ankle that's just going to heal. That's not how it works. You know, you see, you come up with ways to cope, right? Like, I meet with the right people. You know, there's medication, and there's all sorts of different stuff that I do. I meditate a lot. Frank Garza and Luca Garza are really big on that, so they, they put me onto that. So I do a lot of stuff like that, and, uh, you know, just try to, you know, change lifestyle and just, just work through it. There's nothing, there's no one-size-fits-all thing. Yep. And there's just certain things you can do to make you feel better. I love you for it, man. I, I appreciate I, you. I love you for being as, as transparent as you were about I think, it. I think that's really important. Yeah. I like, think the transparency and the, and, and I assume what you got back was everybody kind of wanting to help, yeah. right? And yeah. wanting to you understand. Are, you are an inspiration to so yeah. many people. Thank you. I have a family member who's dealing with this, and I, and I would imagine every single person in this room right now has someone that's going through mental health. And I can't tell you how funny that's, that's with that family member. In my mind, in my heart, and I'm sure your dad and I'm sure your brother think the same way, you instantly say, how do I help? Yeah. How do I fix this? Like, we like to solve problems, but that's not how mental health works. Yeah. So your voice in this is impacting other people in their fight, in their just going through it and then in how we talk about it so thank you yeah absolutely i think think how we talk about it's really important i think you know like because i think i think the stigma is, still, is becoming less and less there's kind of that generation of old people you know where it's like he's a, he's a division one athlete suck it up he gets a scholarship whatever I mean, you say like on, you know man. what i mean so it's like i think we're just kind of but i think our generation of people like is, is outgrowing that and I think we're really starting to understand and appreciate you know the, the difficulties of mental health and why it's so important for so many people here's my question you know it, it hit me when you said it was my dream to play for my dad we all have a special bond with our fathers tell me what yours is and what makes your dad the guy that we aren't able to see every single day yeah you know I think first and foremost it, Nobody has as much belief and confidence in me as he does. And, and it's not just me, it's every player that we have on our roster, one through 15. He implores confidence in all of us. So when you see Peyton Sanford shooting 40 foot bombs off one pass, like that, that's him. That, 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 Cause he gives us the freedom and the green light to do that when we shoot crazy shots. Like, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a coincidence that we've had three guys in the last three years that were like all consideration for player of the year. Luca won it. Keegan probably should have won it. And NBA guys. Yeah, exactly. Like guys that are. I don't think, because I think our system really allows you to come in and thrive. And, you know, I think we, we play really open and free. And I think that's a big credit to him. I think a lot of people see, you know, like stuff like the stare down and like all that all right, kind I of stuff. Go away. All right, we, but we like, can't just go past the stare down. Stare down. Well, what, I didn't what see you, it. I didn't see it. Because I was in the huddle. Really? So, so I'm in the huddle. And, and so like, usually the coaches like meet outside of the huddle at media timeouts and then they come into the huddle and tell us what they talk about out there. 
So I'm in the huddle. We're just sitting there just talking, you know. Mind you, we're like, we're dead to rights at this point. We're down 13 with like a minute and 30 left. So we're just, we're just like, you know what? We're going to keep fighting, keep plugging away. Like, let's go. Like, whatever. And then I just hear Coach Gatons go to, oh, shit. Somebody get Coach. Can I curse? Can I curse? <laughs> Somebody get coach. And so I, <laughs> Not I, was again. Like, I was like, I'm sure he's just yelling at the ref or whatever. I didn't see anything. And then I saw the clip after. And I'm like, wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. It was, uh, you, it was great. You've to see never him. seen him do anything like that, have you? Never, no, never the stare down. But he had just gotten a technical. Right. So the stare down, like, it was like, <laughs> I think he was upset that he got the technical. And I don't think he thought he deserved it. But, like, you can't see him up for looking at him. So what? what's the maddest he ever got at you? Give me the maddest, like, has he ever done, like, like that, that look. So, so that he gets. me personally, like I'm, I'm pretty like low maintenance and like I don't like, like I don't fight with them. Like Connor does. Yeah, Connor does. Right. Connor's the. I mean, they go at it, right? Yeah. yeah, him and Connor really go at it. And you know, it's good. That's what. That's what happens. Like that's what. Like yeah, so, it's the like mellow one. Like Connor's, if he yells at me, I'm Connor's just like, like, All right, and I Connor's like your dad. Yeah. See, I'm not like that. Right. So I don't really like. So I don't really drive him nuts because I don't like try to debate him. I'm just like, all right. And if he keeps yelling, I'll just turn away. Get, I was going to say, does he get mad because he can't get to you sometimes? Probably. I, I don't know. But I think, he, I think he appreciates that about me. I think he knows that I don't rattle easily. You know, I've seen just about everything you could possibly see at this point in my life and in my career. So, you know, it's just kind of like, all right, man, like, play basketball. Like, so I don't. It's funny because, like, I talk to refs about your dad. And they're like, 99% of the game, they love him. Yeah. And then that 1%, he goes ballistic. I think that's his biggest misconception just in the world of basketball. Because people are like, oh, are you scared of your dad? I'm like, no. He's like the nicest dude in the world. It's just when we're in between the lines and he's really passionate about, you know, his program, his players. Yeah. And if he doesn't think we're being treated fairly, he's right. going to speak up about yeah. it. And it's like, there's no, like, I don't think it's like, everybody thinks he's crazy and he's, he's not. Like, just that, like he heats hey, up for the, sure. The Fran like, Con, the Fran Con yeah. 10 is. But I promise there's, I promise 80% of college basketball coaches are worse than him on a daily basis, just in terms of temperament and all that kind of stuff. So, what's next right now? Obviously, there's a lot of movement in the portal, all that stuff. What can people expect? You're not going into the portal, obviously. Of course, that would be an Maybe he will. Move. He might play for Cooley. I thought, he loved Cooley. Hey. I thought about it, but I'm, no, 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 I'm yeah, staying. You gotta put. <laughs> You put your name in the portal, that would be an all-time no, move. I'm telling you, we joked around when he was coming out before he was committing. We were going to tell his dad that he was committing to Cooley instead. <laughs> we were. Cooley right? still texts me all the time. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> uh, what do people have to look forward to next year with Iowa? You graduate, too. Obviously, you're going to lose some other ones. Yeah. As of what you know right now, what can people expect? From you guys. You know, I think what people can expect of Iowa is a fun brand of basketball, always. Yeah, you know, the way we play is really fun. We play a high octane, high possession game, which, you know, it makes it harder to, you know, like, because, like, obviously, if we play such a high possession game, teams are going to score more because you get more possessions. Sure. We don't play that way. We don't slow the game, but we, we want to we wanna play in the 90s. We, that's, that's, how, that's how we're built, that's how he recruits, and that's how we play. So, you know, you're going to get a high octane brand of basketball. I think, you know, like, we have guys coming back like myself, Tony Perkins, Peyton Sanford, that are all really good college basketball players yeah. and have proven that throughout their career. And then we have young guys, too, that I'm excited for, like they didn't get as big of an opportunity last year, like Josh Dix, DeSante Bowen. We got some freshmen I'm excited about. So, you know, I think I think we're – I think – I think it's foolish to, to ever doubt Iowa coming into a season just in because I think we've, we've been pretty consistently. We had one bad year, I think, ever since my dad built it back up. We've had one year where we sucked. But other than that, we've been pretty consistent. So I think we're just going to find a way to do that again. I would, I, would, I would like to see us back in the NCAA tournament. I'd like to see us make a run. I would assume we're going to compete in the top half of the Big Ten. I like our squad, and I'll put us against the, up, us, uh, us, against the, uh, us up against anybody. Right. This yeah. dude, when I first met him, he wouldn't say two words. Not two words. He said 2,000. Maybe awesome. I just didn't want to talk to you. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a reoccurring theme. That's a no, reoccurring that's theme. That's, that's a way to go out. Patrick Love McCaffrey. You, man. Love you. I'll tell you so what, folks, one of the best so voices proud. in this sport. Patrick, thank you Anytime so much for joining us. Anytime you want to come on, you come on. Thanks no, for joining us. podcast on here. Yes. There agreed, agreed. We're going to take we'll a quick time out. We'll be back with more serious XM College Channel 84. You know what the best part about the end of the college basketball season is? That signifies the start of spring, the start of summer, the start of hot weather, the start of late nights, the start of weekends on the water, and the best way to stay refreshed during the summer months is with Hornitos Ranch Water. 
a premium sparkling cocktail with a balance of freshly squeezed lime paired with smooth tequila notes. Hornita Tequila is a 100% agave premium tequila from the lowlands of Jalisco. It's specifically from the town of Tequila. Originating from one of the most historic distilleries, Hornitos paved the way for all future tequila brands, starting with the tequila name. An official partner of the Houston Astros, you can buy Hornitas Ranch Water in a can, or you can come to Houston's best sports bar, Little Woodrow's in Edo, and get a fresh, handmade cocktail with Hornitas Tequila. There is nothing better on a warm spring day than Hornitas Ranch Water and a Houston Astros baseball game. the 68 after dark we're live from 40 below bayou music center houston texas sponsored by bat rivers we're sponsored by underdog fantasy and we are blessed and honored to be in the graces of the 2000 cotton bowl class are you kidding me the pride of the razorbacks we found a winner tonight clint studer is here clint yes. Look at how good to be here, my man. You took it way back, man. That 2000 con. We thought the world was going to end, and then we went out there and kicked Texas's ass, boys. Huh? I this mean, dude could actually look at him. He could lift he me. Move. No, no, but he can move back. Just a little bit. Coach McCall, looks like he could go out and play tomorrow. Listen, I grew up in the South. He knows. My father played linebacker at the University of Florida. I grew up on Gator football. So any SEC player we could get on this show, I'm a fan of. Hey, speaking of Florida, All right, what do we I got? hold a couple of SEC records now. Florida sacked me more times in one game than any player in SEC That's true. history. How many times? Javon Curse. I believe it was 10. Javon Curse. The freak. Javon Curse. It's the freak. Not something I'm proud of. I wouldn't tell you if a Gator wasn't I thought you had mobility. No. None. <laughs> no, not that kind of mobility, no, coach. Uh, not uh, that kind no, of mobility. No, a different type of mobility. I, I, I could dodge. I could dodge the kill shot, yeah. not the sack. The kill <laughs> shot, baby. All right, uh, I love your H Town gear. We're in Houston. What are your thoughts? Well, it's a beautiful city. Welcome. We're glad that you guys are here. Thank you for inviting me tonight because this is a hell of an event, no doubt about it. Uh, we love you. You know I, that. I wouldn't expect anything less from the field of '68 guys than to do it first class, no, no question. But uh, the city's the city's been great. The buzz, man, the buzz has been tremendous leading up to this. Obviously, I'm in the radio business day to day, and uh, we're looking forward to the games to get started. So here's my here's my worry with Houston always. Okay, that it's too spread out. That we don't have like that area, like Indianapolis, New Orleans, San Antonio are all pretty condensed. So that like that's where Houston's a little bit different. You got the, the Galleria, you got downtown, yeah. you got the arena. You got Midtown, a lot. You got you know, you got Rice Village. Here's right. the deal, you're spoiled. You're spoiled. I See, know. it's just like our world today. Everybody wants everything easy. Everybody wants options. You know what I want? No, no in Houston, I in Houston, it. I love it. In Houston, what you got to do? Go ahead. You got to commit. <laughs> Where you do you want to go? Where do you want to go? What party do you want to go to? Because once you show up here, you're here. There's no leaving. It's 30 minutes, and right. it, and that one might be good. Right. right. Commit. And have a hell of a time, baby. That's H Town. That's how right. we do it here. And it's not like the transfer portal. You can't no. just jump in and go wherever you want to go. You're here. That's it. Be embraced of being it. here. What's hey. the Houston cocktail of choice? Well, I tell you. For Clint, it's any cocktail. <laughs> Great point. Great point. I've, I've never turned one away. 
How I'm much wait. alcohol has the field of 12 crew drank? Oh. But, 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 wait, let me, hey, hold on a second. You, you, you can't, let me, let me answer the question. Clint can't, hey, Clint cannot keep up with Hack. You cannot no, no. keep up with Hack. I'm 45 years old. I got a one-year-old daughter. The days of me keeping up with anybody other than her are over. You know what I mean. You got a daughter. But the, the, the drink of choice. The drink of choice around here. Ranch water. I had it. I had it last night. <laughs> several, Ranch water. Several. It's money, baby. It's money. Hit I'm you. a tequila guy, so I love it. It hit no you. Question. Listen, I, I hope this city, the hard part again, is you don't have big fan bases here this year. Florida Atlantic, he, he was an assistant coach at Florida Atlantic 15 years ago. Yep. They ain't bringing anybody. Right? They're, yeah, they're not bringing come anybody. On, Jeff. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, come on, bring Jeff. Some FAU Who are they bringing? It's going to be in the a couple building. thousand from Boca Raton. I think it's going to be anybody. anybody. We, had, we had Jimmy Patsos on. You know yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. We had Jimmy on our show earlier today. He's crazier than your ass. I love Jimmy. He is. He, he can yeah, go now. So, yeah. He can suck the him, out of the room. You and him hurry. together? Holy it, shit. It, it, was, it was music, man. It was sweet music. But he talked about FAU. And about how that used to be the case, but now I believe it was FAU. He was talking about how their attendance is through the roof now. It has been good this year, and yes. and, and they're 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 sold support. out every game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they, they may travel, but I get your point. I mean, you know, yeah. you got you you don't have your blue bloods, you don't have the attraction. Maybe. I love it. I love it. I, do I just don't know if if we're gonna have the same atmosphere. The yeah, owls man. will be in the building. Yeah, the owls will be <laughs> in the building. All right, all right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> hey, I'll right, tell so you I, what. I, I, we gotta ask you though. Who's your pick to win it all? UConn. UConn. Yeah, I mean, here's got. the deal, guys. Here's the deal. Yeah, this is coming uh, from an old football head, right? I like, I like teams that play good defense. I like teams that are physical. I like teams that have an identity. Yep. Now you get to this point, and everybody has an identity, pretty sure. much for yeah, the most part. Right. Here otherwise. You, you may like it. Right. You may not. I don't know. But 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 everybody has an identity. But I'm going to tell you, within the teams that have the identity, the four that are left, I just believe in what UConn does. You, I, I looked at it earlier today. You guys already know this, but oh, football head, i got to do some studying. I mean, the margin of victory for UConn in this tournament in four ball games is 21 or 22 points. I don't do the math. I don't know. But that coupled with the fact that they can out-physical teams and they got a couple of shooters. Uh, now, right. if somebody goes cold, if their shooters go cold, they're in trouble. But I think that's the case well, with anybody but, in the final four. They are, but they can throw it down low. Yep. That's the difference, right? They got two dudes down low you can throw it to. Yep. They got shooters. They got a wing who's probably a lottery pick in Jordan Hawkins. Yep. Yes. They got almost everything. They got the highest upside. Miami, though, can play with them, and Miami can beat them if Norchad, Omier, their big guy, stays out of foul trouble. Yes. And if it gets to a close game, Five minutes to go, and then at that point, it's up to Jordan Miller, sure. Nigel Pack, Isaiah Wong versus Tristan Newton, yeah. Jordan Hawkins, Andre yeah. Jackson. They got right? dudes. No question about it. And the, and the difficult shot making of those cards, their ability to make difficult shots from Miami. Oh. The game gets close down the stretch. Listen, who do you trust more in, in, in Saturday's game? Isaiah Wong or Jordan Hawkins? Who do you trust more? Uh, that's a really hard that's question. That's a tough exactly. question. Exactly. It's exactly. a tough question. That's my point. John L. Davis. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Clint. He goes, He first he says the city of Houston. Then then he goes at FAU fans. I'm not going at him. The, the Owls I'm will saying. be there. They're not That's traveling goody. like the Carolina. Owls will be That's there. Goody. That's Goody. That's Goody's stick. The, the Owls right will be there. in goody, the building. Goody likes to stir the pot. Where's Mama Hog? Where's you, Mama you Hog? Pushing son of a bitch. What Where is she? Where's Mama Hog? Man, the Astros lost, bub. Oh. <laughs> she probably had a, too, a few too many Coors Light. Oh yeah. And she pro she's probably in bed she's by now. Passed out by you now. Know, you know, Mama Hog's about. What year is this? Twenty. Three? 20, Are we 23. <laughs> she's 72, what man. Is, is she 72? She's 72, and she's still coming her, at you, man. She's coming at me. Oh, Goody. Come on. Right? Yeah, she's younger Goody. than Larenega. People still love that, that oh, video. They love that hey, video. She, she's a jewel, man. She, she is, is a jewel. jewel. No, and the Razorbacks, again, had another great year. Great year. Speaking of, we, I can't come on this field of 68 and not talk about my man, Muss. Go ahead. I, I mean, no, look, I, I just I love him as a coach. 
I, I think he's in a, in a league of a, a very few in terms of how much energy and effort and how many stones he flips, the due diligence. I think he, he outworks most he people. Does. He does. And, and we were talking about this a little earlier, guys. When you talk about, like, NIL and, 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 and the transfer portal, obviously, and you see it so much quicker in basketball than you do football, but when you're talking about these mid-range universities, and, Coach, you know it more than I do, but you, these mid-range universities, not the Blue Bloods, but the mid-range that that they got to wait till the, the stars align to make a big run, and then they got to do it all. Try to do it all again. Those universities between COVID, six years, the six-year guys, the transfer portal, and the NIL, it's it's not leveled the playing field. But it sure is one of those tides that that rose the, the Arkansas's of the world, the Missouri's of the world, and I and I know there's the Big 12s. Yeah, well, here's now, the other man. thing too about Arkansas. And take nothing away from the four teams that are here. Take yeah. nothing away from them. Yeah. Arkansas is one of those teams, had they been healthy all year. They might have been here. They, they may have been, been here. here. Yeah. They, they may might. have been here. Had Nick Smith Jr. been healthy all year, they and take nothing away from the four teams that are here. I, coach, but. I, I don't think they had to shoot, man. I don't think you get through UConn if you can't make shots. And, and I think that was the one they thing did. with Arkansas yeah, they didn't all year. Shooters. They didn't have one guy that was they on the floor consistently. Right. We watched it, Jeff. Right. They kind of were a poorly constructed team. Yeah. They had talent, but they weren't. The pieces didn't fit yeah. together. Square peg round hole. You have to shoot it. It was an abnormal to. Arkansas team because you had the horses, you had the athletes, but you didn't have the shooter. It's amazing. Great point. Like at the great end point of the day, from they from they a beat. football guy. Yeah, you know, great point. The football guy. Great point. More than yes. a football guy. All you got to do is give that. me a mic, guys. Give me yeah. a mic and an opportunity. We you, can do this. Come you're, on. You're damn right. And here's the thing. All the more, like, your Hawks still beat the defending national champions. Yes. That was an incredible win over Kansas. Yes. You have been awesome. Work it. Work it tell, plug yourself, Clint Starner. Plug yourself. Plug myself. Yeah. That sounds. That sounds awful. No, not like that. <laughs> what the hell y'all doing in this spot? No, just, not like that. Doing so. uh, no. I'm what? 45 years old. I've never plugged myself, and I'm not going to start now. What the hell are you talking about? Clint Starner, baby. Sports Radio 610 in H Town. Field of 12. And guess what? You can find me on t- on Twitter at, at Clint Sterner. S T O E R N E R. Thanks for having me, y'all. Pull the ranch water out for oh, Clint Sterner. Ranch waters and silver bullets, baby. Let's ride. Hot Bowl Classic, baby. Come on. All right. Uh, we've got about a minute left. So let's run it down here. We're back with you tomorrow from 12 to 2 local time at Little Woodrow's. Then from 6 to 8, the Bayou Music Center. Come to Little Woodrow's for lunch and some beverages. We're going to be back at NRG Stadium. Ten seconds, a final thought. I'm excited for these games. Can't wait. I know. They need Cannot to get wait. Here. Need get to here, here now. Get like, to get here. tomorrow. Hey, for Patrick McCaffrey, for Bob Huggins, for Chris Caputo, the list goes on and on. For Matt McCall, Jeff Goodman, Clint Stoner. I'm John Fanta for our entire crew. We'll see you tomorrow, Little Woodrow's at high noon. Thanks to Intersport and 40 Below for having us. We're presented by Bet River. See, good night, everybody from Houston. See you tomorrow on Final Four Friday.